watch TV, don't read magazines, don't even listen to NPR. Create your own. You just need the sweet taste of a Diet Dr. Pepper. Hello everybody, and welcome to the sweet taste of Saturday morning cartoon Max. It's Halloween Max, everyone, and we're here to bring you on a lovely ride as we go through some wonderful new episodes that we have added on for the next month of That's right. They're going to be spooky. I hope you don't get scared. Make sure you have someone strong and brave to hang out next to you. Maybe you could use a couple of Diet Dr. Peppers. We're not going to keep you long today. No delays, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get right into the episode because there's too much to see, too much to watch, and too much fun to be had. Now, Yuzo, what do they need to do right now? How? They need to go get themselves a heaping bowl of their favorite part. Of a Dr. Pepper. That's right. And make sure that you stay here with us from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. for the cartoons and from 12 to 1 for the closer. On the only place to be for Saturday mornings. Saturday morning cartoon matches! the monsters of the past comes a new generation dedicated to reversing the evil image of their forefathers. Under the leadership of none other than Count Dracula, known as Big D, three teenagers form the do-gooder group named the Dragpack. With special powers, they can transform into super mighty monsters and use their skills against all evildoers, especially the diabolical Dr. Dread and his renegade rascals, Toad, Fly, Mummy Man, and Vampira, a group known as Ogre, the organization of generally rotten enterprises. It's right versus wrong, good over free, niceness against naughtiness. That's the dedication of the terrific trio, Frankie, Howler, and Jack Jr., the Drag Pack. like a failure because the draft pack has thwarted all his evil plots. It's given him an inferiority complex, poor dear. I'm suggesting that he read these books on how to develop a more colorful personality. Hmm. Maybe I'll slip in a book on how to control a red hot temper. Whoops! Oh no! Any noise in Dr. Fred will be very angry. Oh! Oh! Oh, I, I'm sorry, Master. I didn't mean to interrupt your uh, uh, inferiority complex. What inferiority complex, Claude? I am the brilliantly radiant Dr. Dredd, and don't you forget it. I, I guess he's feeling better. He's his old rotten self again. Uh-oh. I brought some books, Dr. Dredd. Books? Bah, I don't need books to change my personality. I guess he is feeling better. Right, baby. The problem is not that I have to be more colorful. No, the solution is obvious. 
The world must become less colorful. Uh, brilliant conclusion, Master. Uh, but, but how do you make the world less colorful? Huh? How? With this, the Dr. Dread Color Collector. It is, of course, only a model, but most effective nonetheless. Behold! Amazing! Incredible! But where did all the color go? Oh, that's where. Enough dilly dally. We must construct a full size color collector at once. Hop to it, Toe. And as for you, Dart Pack, you're in for a very colorful experience. Or should I say, colorless? <laughs> This is it. Boy, I can hardly wait to get my new suit. Well, well, what have you to report? They have entered the store, Dr. Dredd. Good, good. Give me the location, Vampira. Area 2C, Sector 5. I just set my instrument in the proper parameter. Area 2C. Sector 5? Perfect! That suits me fine! Well, how do you like it? I picked it all out by myself. Remind me never to let Frankie go shopping by himself again. The true glory of this garment can only be appreciated in the daylight. Let's go outside. Wow! I see what he means. Me too! Yikes! We should put my sunglasses. Well, Frankie, uh, that's what I call a... a suit. Hey, what happened to my set of threads? Wow, I've heard of colors that fade, but that's ridiculous. Uh, oh, I, oh, dear. Mm, I'll, I'll tell you what. Um, I'll reduce it to half price, and I'll throw in an extra pair of pants. And, and fellas, oh, oh, uh, that's close. Nerve of that guy trying to sell me a suit like that. I liked it better after it faded. Anything would have been an improvement. Order to Dr. Dredd. They are approaching the intersection. Oh, this is such fun! Yeah! Watch out! Frankie, you went through a red light. I did not. The signal wasn't working. Yipes! What are we doing up here on the museum steps? It was the only safe place we could find. I wouldn't bet on it, Frankie. What's going on? Oh, boy, the art museum director. Don't worry, I'll handle this. Uh, you're probably wondering why we're parked here. Yes? Well, it's, uh, very simple. Uh, that is, uh, I mean, um... Yeah, <laughs> see, uh, Drac really has a way with words. <laughs> a funny way. <laughs> Never mind that. Maybe you can explain this. Certainly. Those are very nice drawings. Wrong. They were paintings until a few minutes ago. Paintings? But that's... Drac, we gotta go. An emergency call from Big D. Come on. About these paintings. What next? Trouble, Big D. What's the trouble? My tomato juice, that's the trouble. No self-respecting vampire would drink tomato juice like that. Yuck. Is that all? No, that is not all. Look at my stuffed vulture. My new red cane, my disco shot. Even my electric fang brush. Gosh. All the colors gone. Oh, you know this. If this keeps up, I look like a paint by number. Uh oh, me and my big mouth. Wow, we big is bleached. Do something. Uh -oh. This is getting a weird. One thing is becoming crystal clear. Yeah, 
our table. That does it. Someone is pilfering pigments. Right. Stealing colors, too. Yeah, but who? Huh? Hey, where did they come from? Pretty flowers. Let's find out. What's the note say? What's it say? Hmm. It's a poem. Violets aren't blue. Roses aren't red. You can blame it all on... Not gone. It just ends. Hmm. It's got to be something that rhymes with red. Let's see. Ted, Fred... Uh, Dread? Dr. Dread. Well, certainly it's Dr. Dread. Who else? Come on! Yeah, come on. I'm coming! Wow, the city looks like something out of a coloring book. Right, you meddler, and Dr. Dredd has all the crayons. Oh, can I blast them, Dr. Dredd? Let Toad tone them down, huh? Please, huh? There, that'll wash them out. Oh, no! You're the washout, you warty weasel! That button is the color restorer, you noodle noggin! Bad toad, bad toad. Now, our first problem is locating that sneaky color crook. Yikes! It looks like he located us. With some kind of a ray. We've got to find out where that came from. Uh, Drek? We'll search the whole city if necessary. We won't stop until... But, but, uh, uh Drek? Not now, Howler. Can't you see I'm busy? Dred's hiding somewhere, and... I don't have time to admire the view. We have to... Hey, look what I found. It's Dred's hideout. Let's go! Look what he's found! Those do-gooders are falling right into my trap. And we have the color bats ready. I'll take care of young Drip. Olga, you capture the other two. Certainly, Dr. Drip. Right away. A pleasure. Mm, fine. <laughs> fine. Let's go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> After you, Master. I'm not jumping out of the window, you klutz. Dr. Dredd has more devious methods. Shh. That ogre gang might be just around the next corner. <laughs> hey, look! It's Dredd! Greetings, Black! That's Drac. I might have known I'd find you defacing public property. What are you up to? Come now, young man, we can't talk here. Even the walls have ears. Oh, no. Another dumb meeting. Where this time? Just follow the arrows, me boy. They point the way. Wait here. I'll find out what this is all about. <laughs> well, Drek sure got a line on devious Dr. Dredd. I'd sure feel better if I knew where that ogre gang was. Well, then. This should make you really happy, darling. Get them. Yeah! Yes, I would say things are really looking up to the tower. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. Boy, this is really for the birds. I should have taken a bus. Beginning to wonder if these silly arrows lead any. Oh well, at least it wasn't a wild goose chase. <laughs> Me cockles. Don't feel too bad, guys. Oh yeah. Why not? I heard Doctor Dredd say he'd have us feeling in the pink in no time. In the pink. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages.
Oh, I do enjoy an evening with a little light entertainment. But when your video heads get dirty, you lose your picture. Not a pretty sight. Happily, this new Polaroid video cassette will help you. It actually cleans your heads as it plays, so dirty heads needn't haunt you. New Polaroid video cassettes. Get the picture? <laughs> Halloween Toys R Us doesn't miss a trick, and the price is a retreat. We've got costumes for all Toys R Us kids, even grown-ups. And loads of candy, makeup, masks, and more. Toys R Us will make your Halloween supernatural. <laughs> Hallmark presents Halloween as you've never seen it before. Hallmark's Boo Bazaar, where actual costume accessories create a spectacle beyond belief. <laughs> Horrify your head. Try on glowing terror. Shake in your shorts. <laughs> Everything to let the cool times roll is at Hallmark's Boo Bazaar. Now playing in a store near you. I'm frightened. Welcome to the world of terror. When I'm not busy embalming bodies, which isn't often, I like to relax with some good family reading. Let me introduce you to my personal library of Fangoria, the leader in horror entertainment. What a fascinatingly hideous cover of Freddy Krueger and devilishly candid reviews of the latest horror videos and gloriously bloody color photos from the newest Friday the 13th. They're all here in Fangoria. Can I persuade you to subscribe? This is Fango editor Tony Tapone asking you to enter the world of Fangoria. Only $12.49 for a special six-month video subscription. Send check or money order to Fangoria Magazine, 475 Park Avenue South, New York, 10016. Ah, oh, let the dead bodies wait. At Target, we have everything you need for Halloween, including decorations that can turn any house into a haunted house and a frighteningly large selection of candy. Target. Your first stop for Halloween. Come in. Oh, that's clever. Very funny, Drake. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Not that funny, you tickering toad. I must apologize for your drab surroundings, but never fear. My assistant will soon put a little color into your life. Just aim the color collector at anything pink, Toad, and the drag pack will come to a colorful end. Oh, goody. I get to play. Pink, 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 pink. Oh, boy! Look, Drax! So that's his game, is it? The old simple pack of the pink trap. Look, boss, I'm even using my pinky. <laughs> well, keep at it till you've purloined all the pink from the public and private premises. Slurp it up, Toad. Hey, what happened? And that does it. What? <laughs> Our future doesn't look too good. Oh, yeah? I'd say our future looks extremely rosy. Master, may I stop now? It's time for my lunch. Stop? Lunch? Of course not, you ugly green wart. Keep working. I'm going to dream up bigger and nastier plants. Yeah. Mean, Dr. Dredd. Mean, Dr. Dredd. Ugly green wart, am I? Where's that color restorer button? Ah, there it is. Oh, very pretty. Hmm, a bit too flamboyant, perhaps. That's not really me. I'm not feeling blue. No, too formal. Try again. Hey, 
the levels stop rising. That's good, because I hate pink. You really hate pink, Frankie? It's my bar most unfavored color. Yeah. It must make you mad being up to your neck in it. Yeah, now that you mention it. Boy, I'd be mad too. Nothing but pink everywhere. Yeah, now I'm really mad. Pink is fun. <laughs> Good going, Frankie. Now, Pack, let's drack whack. Wacko! <laughs> This is fun. This time we try a red coat, purple pants, and... Oh no! Bad toad, bad toad! I did a boo-boo. <gasps> a headless bob. Got the bread, got the bread. <laughs> I've never seen toad looking better. I wish I could say the same for the rest of them. All right, Olga, what are you waiting for? Capture them! <laughs> I'll get them. <laughs> Ready, Frankie? Yeah, let's skip this one. A one, a two, a three, a weary, four, five, a six, a weary, This will keep you hopping, you overgrown dust rag. Mommy, stop playing games! <laughs> <laughs> situation well in hand. Or should I say claws? I've always wanted that handsome drac in my clutches. Pretty fancy footwork, drac. It'll do in a pinch, vampire. I resist you with that smart alec vampire. Make it snappy, fly. He won't stand still. I think it's time to make myself skip. Get him. Get him. Yes, yeah, not me! Yuck, and not me either. I've never looked good in yellow. Hey, sorry about that. You will be sorrier when you get my cleaning bill. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. That dragon Mac Pack is ruining my plan! A drag pack, Master. Uh, what are we going to do? Oh, this is your fault. You are going to sneak up to the color collector and blast that tricky trio into see-through superheroes. I am. Aren't you? I am. Then hop to it. So far, so good. Nobody's here. Wrong, Toad. But, uh, I, I was just... Leaving? Uh, right, yes. I was just leaving, yes. Uh-huh. Well, let me help you on your way. Thank you. Very kind. Much obliged. Fly, as an airbrush artist, you're a fizzle. No! You can say that again. Stop, Olga! I command you! I hope they enjoy their get-together. Yeah, there's nothing like bumping into old friends. Now, let's get the city back to normal. Do you know how to work that control thing right? Are you kidding? It looks tricky. There's, uh, really nothing to it. There's really nothing to it, huh? Well, there's not much to me either. I wish I'd said that. <laughs> hmm, uh, a slight miscalculation. Simple to correct. There you are. But where am I? Uh, don't panic. Uh, I'll take care of everything. Hmm, it's a bit more complex than it looks. Let's try this one. 
and this. A couple of these. That one. See? I told you not to worry. Gee, thanks, Drac. You're brilliant. If you think he's brilliant, take a look at that. I'll get you for this, Drac Pack. Nobody dabbles with the dynamic Dr. Dread. He's so shy. Yeah, he's blushing all over. Well, that does it. Yeah, we've given this caper to rush. Yep, everything's back to normal. Dr. Dread, Dr. Dread. Well, not quite everything. Dr. Dread, there's a beautiful yellow streak down your back. Quiet, you colorless clown. <laughs> Come in, Big D. Come in. I sure hope he's home. Yeah, wake up. We've got great news for you. We fixed everything. All the color is back where it belongs. Oh, yes? That's what you think, Smarties. What happened to my beautiful sickly green? Oh, boy, kids do that. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Hey, you two. It's Weird Paul. Hi there. Um, this is Paul. Today, I am coming to you live from my parents' house because it's the 30th anniversary of my McDonald's breakfast review. And we just went to McDonald's and got a McDonald's breakfast, okay? In 1984, when I filmed my McDonald's breakfast review, a McDonald's breakfast cost $1.15. Now, it costs $3.39. And this is what they looked like. Yum! Yum! Now, I ate a lot of it already, but there's still some left here. And I think I'll show you what everything is, okay? Okay. Now, this right here. Okay. <laughs> This is a scrambly. That's pretty good. Though. Well, either this was better in 1984, or I was just easier to please. Now these are, this here, these are English muffins. One of the things that's changed about the McDonald's breakfast is you no longer get an English muffin. Now there's a buttermilk biscuit. La di dee, la di dee. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Even with the butter, this is pretty dry. I think I preferred the English muffins. Well, this is sausage. I see, I see you can see I've eaten a lot of it already, but, but this is a whole bunch of burn turd to pick up and put together and fry it. But it's not too bad to They add sugar sauce. Well, the breakfast still comes with the sausage. I guess there's no lack of bird turd in the world. But I don't think they add sugar anymore. Last I say this, I didn't even take a bite because I wanted to save it for be able to show it. My hash brown. And I'll get some telephoto on here so that you'll be able to get a real good look at it. Well, I suppose we should get some telephoto on it. See? McDonald's. See? McDonald's. And that's what they look like. It appears to be a bit smaller than it used to be, and a lot soggier. You know what? This is a piece of big crap, right? Okay, you're all waiting for me to say it again. You know what this is? It's a piece of big crap, right? There's a very greasy Ronald McDonald on the back. I'm taking my first bite of my hash brown. Mmm, good. Mmm, good! I think this was, and still is, my favorite part of the breakfast. That was like my breakfast, like, okay, and... That was like my breakfast, like, okay. I'm pretty sure the McDonald's will still be around 30 years from now. So in 2044, if YouTube still exists, and if I'm still around, maybe I'll do another McDonald's breakfast review. I hope you enjoyed the 30th anniversary of my McDonald's breakfast review. Thanks, YouTube.
Thank you. Everybody shout! Come on now, sing out! It's time for the ghoulies get together. They got jokes for everyone with laughter songs and fun. So let's go to the ghoulies get together. Come on, everybody, join the ghoulies. They're gonna do their thing for you. They're kind of strange and they're real fun. You'll be glad to know they love you too Hey, everybody shout Come on now, sing up It's time for the ghoulies get together You're gonna see how funny they could be Cause it's time for the groovy ghoulie show Sabrina, like big ones. Now who in the name of Hepzibah stole my poison mushrooms? <laughs> Don't ask me. I'm no toadstool pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I invented, Sabrina. What do you call it, Agatha? A hot bag. What else? <laughs> Hey, Bonaparte baby, who is your favorite comedian? Red Skeleton. Who else? What's for dinner, Agatha? I am a lunch of Mexican food. Oh, I love Mexican food. Bad. Dr. Jekyll and Hyde, I'm worried about my uncle. He thinks he's an elevator. Then send him up to see us. Oh, I can't. You see, he doesn't stop at your floor. I needed that. What a perfect day for our ghouly golf game. Oh, yes. It's so nice and gloomy. Mommy, I hope you're a good player. Uh, don't worry. With me on your team, the game's wrapped up, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Fine thing, Ratso. They have all the fun while we're left holding the bags. <laughs> don't worry, Batso. We'll fix them. Where is that confounded Wolfie? We can't start without him. Here he comes now. <laughs> Hey, you cats! Like, let's get this golf game a rolling a rolling. Well, I'll take the first shot. You mean you'll be the first shot? Before you know. Man, that is a wild follow through. I never knew he was so attached to the game. Now it's my turn. I really paced this one. So will I. <laughs> Four! <laughs> Is it what you call your bat swing? <laughs> hey, man, now it's my turn. Let's have a ball, Ratso. One ball coming up. <laughs> like four! Looks like Wolfie has a birdie. Looks to me like the birdie has Wolfie. <laughs> oh, luckily, he fell into the sand trap. <laughs> but unluckily, it's a quicksand trap. 
And now it's my turn. But so, would you hand me my iron? <laughs> it's not iron. It's rubber. <laughs> Three. That's four. We didn't get up to that in school yet. <laughs> Now that's what I call a water hazard. <laughs> Such perfect strokes. Ah, he's a regular Arnold Palmer. <laughs> Man, I reckon any cat what digs golf is like all wet. Garth, <laughs> you could say the same thing about skateboard. <laughs> Someone scratching at the door. Oh, by the way, Drac, the drawbridge is like O U T. Out, man, out. You don't say. Gulhan, I need a hand. Count? You can count on me, pal, but only up to five. As you can see, we need a new drawbridge. That's easy enough. <laughs> Is it safe? Safe? What? I'll let my finger do the walk and see. I had to get stuck with a hand that's all thumbs. <laughs> Stay 
right here. We'll be back after these messages. Master? Quiet, I'm calculating. Isn't it dark in there? Not for my new Anylite Solar Calculator from Texas Instruments. You have a Texas Instrument? Texas! Texas Instruments Anylite Calculator. Unlike other solar calculators, it works in almost... Anylite. Good and feel. The new line of Anylite Solar Calculators from Texas Instruments. Imagine the Prince of Darkness with a solar calculator. <laughs> I'm Freddy Krueger, your worst nightmare come alive, and now I'm on your telephone. Dial this number now and I'll tell you Freddy's favorite bedtime stories. Gruesome new tales of murder and mayhem, frightful heart stoppers of pain and gore. So dial this number now if you dare, and prepare for a scare. Freddy Krueger has a special message just for you. Two dollars the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. Children, get your parents' permission before you dial. I hate how they wrinkle my suit. You ought to see my cleaning bill. Oh, they rub against my neck. They're uncomfortable. How about this for an alternative? Safety belts are way too confining. I'm in complete agreement. More or less. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Um, now it's weird. Window time. I've got to fly now, but I'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Hey, Sabrina, I hear Cuz Hagatha is opening a drive-in restaurant. Really? Gonna sell chicken in a casket. Oh, oh, Here's Cool Hands Hand Hints for Lane Linoleum. Dip your brush in the glue, spread evenly, and roll out linoleum. But remember, don't do it single-handed. Hmm, I wonder me what's for din, -din. <laughs> I should have told him we're having pig's knuckles. <laughs> What's the name of the world's most famous ghost writer? Edgar Allan Poe. Well, I'll be gall darned. It's the game room. And I didn't need them. Would you like to meet a gorgeous pen pal? Send name and address for immediate response. Oh, ho, ho. here goes. <laughs> How's that for an immediate response, sweetie? <laughs> they must have sent that scare mail. Oh, oh, boy. I've just been signed by a baseball team, the Transylvania Fright Sox. Like what position? Bat boy. Batter up. Oh, oh, it's the auntie room. Auntie, nephew, my, you certainly have gruesome. Thanks, auntie, I certainly am. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Oh, that really shattered my ego. Gee, Bella, this is really nice of you to help out. Oh, I'm glad to do it. After all, what a close-knit fiend's for. Sticks and stones may break my bones. What am I saying? <laughs> You thought you bald head. That's the way the skull bounces. Oh, I saw the whole thing. Don't worry, I'll have you back together in no time at all. But like everybody's gotta unwind sometime. A fine mess for it now. Don't you worry. I know just what to do in these cases. Help! Keep calm, we are a doctor. Jekyll and Hyde. My, an accident victim. Nice of him to bring his own bandages. What bandages? I'm the mummy. And I'm Bonaparte. Don't worry, we know just what to do. We're an expert in first aid. 
That's not first aid. That's worst aid. There you are. Perfect. Perfect. We got two heads. Doesn't everybody? Yeah, but there are two of us in here. Hide, you idiot. This is all your fault. I'm Jekyll, you are right. Wrong. I'm Jekyll. You are crazy. That's who. I... You know, Mommy, I always knew we'd wind up together. Hey, you groovy guys and ghouls. It is your hairy hoedad wolfie here to lay some surfing on you, dig? Like, woo! First thing you need is a surf board and a big wave. One big wave coming up, pal. You hoo Not that kind of wave, you Grammy. Sorry, pal. Luckily, I have just the thing for permanent waves. Yippee! Now, when you surf, two things to watch out for. One, alligators. Two, drawbridges. <laughs> Sunday surfer? I believe now's a good time to demonstrate a very sharp turn. I'm soaked to the bone. Horrible Hall, Bella La Ghostly spoking. <laughs> Sorry, the witch board is flooded with calls. Quick, Frankie, I need you in my garden. What's up, Agatha? The big green meanie is running amok in my rutabuggers. Garden trouble? I'll nip that right in the bud. I don't see the big green meanie anywhere. Peekaboo, but he sees you. Heavens to Hepzibah. <laughs> I didn't need that. Why is that overgrown artichoke? Mighty Mo and Meanie Eenie make this meanie a teeny weeny. <laughs> Let's see you try that again. Okay. <laughs> oh, drat. The spell's worn off. What'll I do? Well, now, don't blow your cool, hag baby. You know I dig Frankie the most. I needed that. Oh, thanks, Wolfie. I'll take it from here. <laughs> now, let's see you stop my rutabaggers, you big ape. Whatever you say, Agatha. You ninny! Some help you are. I'll have to handle that big meanie myself. Lightning, thunder, darkest gloom. Powers make the flowers bloom. Ah, ah, Stop! I'm allergic to flowers. Ah, Quit it! Stop it! Ah, Congratulations, Agatha. You turned him into a blooming dum dum. Ha-ha! 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 Today's special ghosts, uh, guests, are that revolutionary new rock group, The Spirits of 76. Really, man? They don't look a day over 75. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! <laughs> Come and see the monsters on parade Come and see it all, you'll be amazed They're marching side by side, so please don't try to hide But just come and see the monsters on parade Over there's a fire-breathing dragon He works part-time at the hot dog 
wagon Listen closely and you'll hear The screaming band she's given cheer Come and see Come and see Come and see the monsters of parade Come and see Come and see Some witches, and over there you'll find a bunch of ghouls. There were some ghosts, but you can't see them unless, of course, they want you to come and see. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is... Halloween is really a special time, isn't it? Especially for me. You can see why if you know who I am. Look up a little. <laughs> That's me, a jack-o'-lantern. At Halloween time every year, I sit up here and watch everybody go by. It's a nice and scary time, isn't it? All those wonderful costumes and masks and makeup. I think about how much fun Halloween is. I also worry a little bit about the things that can spoil the fun of Halloween. Those kinds of things scare me too, but in a different way. For instance, look next door. That's where Cory lives. Cory, have you got that pumpkin ready yet? Yes, yes. Cory's going to carve a pumpkin with her this dad. Pumpkin, oh my God, weighs 50 pounds. That's a big one. It probably weighs close to that. 
Probably. Come on in here and set it down. Okay. Let me get the paper straightened out. How's that? That's fine. Have you decided what kind of face you're going to make on it yet? A happy face. Oh, yeah. Now, a pumpkin's not easy to carve. I know that. You need the proper tools. But Those first, you have to draw a face that you can carve. So you got to be careful. Corey's doing that. That's a nice pumpkin face. Thank you. Well, let's see if we can cut the top off now. Then you cut the top off so you can scoop out the insides. It takes a sharp knife. And you know, sharp knives can be dangerous if they're not used right. I'm glad that Corey's father is helping her. It's much safer that way. Eager to get inside? Yeah. Go ahead and pull that off. Ew, look. You ever seen the inside of a pumpkin before? Yeah. Not that way. Okay, now comes the fun part. I'm going to start cleaning it out. <laughs> Getting my inside scooped out tickles me. <laughs> It'd tickle you, too, if, if you were a pumpkin. So far, it's been fun. But look at Corey's hand. <laughs> kind of gooey, isn't it? Corey is going to carve the face with a small knife. Can you imagine how that knife could slip and maybe cut her? I hope Corey will do the safe thing. <laughs> Good, that's a lot better. A clean, dry hand can hold a knife safely and cut with it safely, too. Cut slowly, carefully, in small slices, and always cut away from yourself. Make sure there's an adult or someone a lot older than you who can help you if you need help. That's the safe way to carve a pumpkin. I'm glad Corey isn't going to spoil her Halloween fun. Carve carefully. That's one way to have a Halloween that's fun and safe. But what about having a candle burning inside your pumpkin? Well, I'm sitting on brick. But a candle and a pumpkin on a wooden porch might not be safe at all. A flashlight could be a lot safer then. But it's best to stay away from lighted candles that are inside or outside of jack-o'-lanterns. You know why. Well, not everybody carves a pumpkin on Halloween. But just about everybody does dress up in a costume. For instance, look across the street there. Do you see what I see? That robot is Jeremy in his costume. Oh, oh Jessica, it's you. How do you like my costume? You look great. Mm -hmm. Well, it may look great from the outside, but from the inside, things don't look very good at all. Jeremy can't see very well with his robot head on, and I don't think the rest of his costume lets him walk very well. He can't bend his knees. How are you going to walk in that way? I don't know. It's hard for Jeremy to keep his balance. If Jeremy went out like that, he might keep losing his balance all the time. He might fall down just anywhere, and probably everywhere. Sidewalks hurt you when you fall on them, and so do streets. And streets are especially dangerous to fall down on. Jeremy has to be able to walk better if he doesn't want to spoil his Halloween fun. There, that's better. A costume shouldn't make you trip or fall. That's not safe. It should be easy for you to move in your costume. And you have to be able to see where you're going. Look, Jessica. A mask that makes it hard to see yes, could get you into all kinds of trouble. There, that's much better. Jeremy can see well now and move safely in his costume too. Oh, but look at Jessica. She can't see much with her mask on. It's too big for me. A monster needs an ugly face. But does it have to be a mask? Makeup can be just as good. And it's always just the right size for you. Just don't get it in your eyes. Okay. Get another one. If you're not too good at putting on makeup, get an adult to help you. Make sure your mask and costume let you see well and walk well, and they won't spoil your fun on Halloween. Of course, the reason you get all dressed up at Halloween is so you can have fun going trick-or-treating. Just the normal kid. I'm not sure what they 
they are. But they're totally bizarre. My name's Chris. Let me tell you about the moonlight and night when creepy crawler goop mandos came in a flash of light. All this glowing goop came pouring out and then they appeared. And they each got different powers. Well, they're all kind of weird. But you could say I made some new friends, even though I'm not sure how. But me no goop and grime has my magic maker now. He's making evil crime rhymes. I've got to stop it somehow. Now the whole world's in danger. Could it get any stranger? And slimy crime grinds. Creepy crawlers. Behold! Whoa, did you oh, see that? Awesome. And for my next trick, a rabbit from my hat. The only bunnies I want to see are dust bunnies on the end of your broom. Huh? Well, I'm out of here. Gotta run. I hired you to sweep up around here, boy, not perform cheap tricks. But, Professor, I took this job because I love magic. You were a great magician once, weren't you? I still am the greatest. Blackstone was a drone. Houdini, a weenie. But I remember one fateful night back in 53. I was a nominee for Magician of the Year. My fellow conjurers and prestidigitators, prepare to be dazzled as I make this full-grown African elephant disappear before your very eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Now you will see who is the greatest magician of all. Get <laughs> <laughs> off me, you ponderous racketeer! <laughs> <laughs> But they were just jealous of my talents. I'll show them someday. Someday very soon. Old Goog and Grime may be a few jokers short of a full deck, but I'll show them I've got what it takes to be a great magician. Just wait till he sees my magic maker. Uh, hmm. What I need is something to spice up this trick. Let's see. Cards, rope trick, shell game, rubber chicken. Magic light bulb, poopy cushion, <laughs> ah, flash powder, perfect. Boy, <gasps> have you finished your chores? Not yet, sir. I was just working on my newest trick. I call it the fabulous magic maker. Magic maker, eh? Hmm, what to do? Too much flash powder? Now I've got a trick for you, boy. It's called, you're fired. <laughs> and if I ever catch you around here again, I'll practice my world famous vanishing act on you. Wait, what about my magic maker? It took me months to build. Professor Googing Grime. <sighs> Who needs that old phony anyway? <laughs> the time of my revenge is at hand. According to this book, tonight is the night of the magical millennium moment, an event that only occurs once every thousand years. Tonight, I will capture its mystic forces and prove that I am the greatest magician in the world. Where would old Goofy Grime stash my magic maker? Yes! A mystical moment. 
moment has arrived. Let its power be mine. Now to get out of here before. Maker! My magic maker! Whoa! Did anyone get the number of that moonbeam? Who's there? Here! I'll throw some light on the subject, amigo! Ah! Big, huge bugs! Nice going, Volk! You overgrown sunlap! You shot the poor kid! Hey, who's he calling a huge bug? I'm not huge. Husky, maybe. Big bone, yeah, but not huge. I'll stop him! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Relax! Let me deal with this. Whoa! <laughs> now, why don't we just stop this fighting, fellas, and uh, call it a time? Okay, I give up. Hurt me, torture me, make me listen to the Olsen twins sing. Why would we want to hurt you? You made us! I did? But where did you guys come from? In there! Yuck! Somehow all this goop must have reacted with that big burst of light. Weird. There's another one! Now look what you've done! You scared Team Flea! I scared it? Boy, what are you doing here? I warned you what would happen if you came back. Professor Guggengrime, I can explain everything. Well, not everything. Now you sleep, now you don't! What? It wasn't me. It's them! You think you can make a fool out of me? He doesn't have to. You're doing a terrific job yourself. Yow! Oh, what are those, uh, th those things? Those goop mandos? That's what I was trying to tell you. There was this weird light, and it hit my magic maker. And then, or jip jump jing, we popped out. Eat that. They talk. And we're housebroken too, babe. I'm Hocus Locus, and that's Volcho and Tick Trick Tick. D3 for short. <laughs> so, the magical millennium moment worked. Perfect. With these three creepy crawler goop mandos, I finally have the tools to destroy my enemies. No one in the world can stand against me now. Uh, pr Professor, maybe I'd better be going. You're not going anywhere with my magic maker. Put that down. But it's mine. I said drop it. Ah. <laughs> Run, you fool. Run. I don't need you. I don't need anyone. You dare challenge me? Ah, who can play that game? Yeah. These guys a couple are not short of a Sunday. Let's get out of here. I'm with you. Hey, kid, wait for us. Wait, come back. <laughs> come back. <laughs> Boy, what a day. Shut up, what? At least you've got your health. Ah, you again. Did you miss us? Yeah. Uh, no. I mean, why are you guys still bugging me? Hey, man, we're bugs. That's what we do. So just think of the rest of your life as one big picnic. And you know how much bugs love picnics. Besides, where else are we gonna go? Back to Guggenheim's place? We like you, muchacho. For a human, you're okay. Please, don't make us go back to Guggenheim's. Pretty please. Please take us home yeah, with you. Come on, Chris. Oh, por favor. Please, please take us home yeah, with you. Okay, on. okay. I hate to see grown bugs cry. All right. What a guy. Hoo-ha. I don't need that brat or his cursed crawlers. I still have this, so I'll make my own crawler creations. 
I'll call them my crime grimes. Yes, and when I do, let the world beware. <laughs> Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Hallmark's ready for Halloween, and you know, it's the strangest thing. Everybody's wild about new scratch and sniff stickers in special trick-or-treat packages. And they're dying to take home these cuddly pumpkin bean bags. And these party decorations are so popular, they seem to just disappear. So come to Hallmark, the Halloween store. <laughs> We're waiting for you. You know what? Make you Mr. Wrong. Get the right spray. I had enough of Mr. Wrong. I wanna be Mr. Right. Creepy crawler goo mandos! Hey guys, this is great! All you can eat! I hope you're still hungry, T3. I'm whipping up my special recipe for goop soup. Man, this TV show is boring. There's no plot. But for some reason, I'm getting really hungry. Whoa! What are you guys doing? You're gonna wake everybody in the house. Party's over. Todd, I was uh, just starting to clean up. Good. You better start with the kitchen before Mom sees it. It's a disaster area. Oh, and Dad said the garage is mine. No, Todd, I'll do it. Besides, don't you have a guitar lesson this morning? Huh, well, yeah. I guess I'll owe you one. Oh, but don't get near my car. No problem. You can count on me. Phew. getting good at this. Oh, what am I gonna do with you guys? I predict I will win. The spirits have told me I'm the winner. And the annual top hat award for magician of the year goes to... The Great Dugan Grime! <laughs> My fellow wizards, hear me now. You made me angry I had a cow. And although you boo me, I won't be leaving. Cause today's the day that I get even. For those of you who think I'm loopy, I'm proud to present Mr. Spooky Goopy. Wow, this is going to be a, a fun night. <laughs> I can feel it in my bones. Oh, unbelievable. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> to magic school with your puppets, you have been. How dare you laugh at me? Eat, Shaka Roach, eat! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, that does it. Now he'll never get to be the spokesman for Skinny Bird. <laughs> will ever doubt that I am the greatest magician of them all. You're my kind of master, master. I tip my hat to you, oh great evil magician. A little help here, oh great evil magician. <laughs> I think it's time we ride in style. Guggenheim style. <laughs> Today the city, tomorrow the supper. Hold on to your seat. A whacked out magician, Professor Guggenheim, has created a giant monster that's running amok in our city. It's got a big appetite, and I mean big. He's already eaten City Hall. He's also eaten the entire underwear department of Bloomingdale's department store, giving a whole new meaning to the saying, eat my shorts. And it's just been reported he was heading toward Channel 27 Studios. Channel 27, that's us. Time out of here! More on this at 11! Oh no! Look what Guggenheim's done to my magic maker! I'm responsible for this mess! We've got to stop that mad magician! I'm all charged up and ready to go! hoo -ha! Just let me at that slime ball! No way! We can't go in Todd's car! It's off limits! Hey! All it needs is a little group pack booster and uh... Say hello to the Crawler Cruiser! Hey! Whoa! Relax, Whoa. Chris. I know how to drive. You do? Sure. These guys are always telling me that I drive them crazy! <laughs> Everybody buckle up! Whoa! Slow down! Chihuahua! And I thought T3 had an appetite. Let's just stop that motor mouth before he turns this whole city into fast food. Pick a card, pal. Any card. I'll rock him and shock him. Oops. Move over, crawlers. I'll tie this thing up faster than you can say, try new flab. It's biodegradable. <laughs> Yes, you guys need a little more practice. A lot more practice. But no matter, thanks to you, boy, everyone will know who's the world's greatest magician. You mean the world's greatest thief. Let me take care of him, Chris. This is a crawler's job. Charge! Huh? Looks like you just <laughs> blew a fuse. How about a one-way ticket back to the goop factory? <laughs> <laughs> Now I know what T3 stands for. Tired, tuckered, and through. You're all through, you goop troop. I wrote this goop in two seconds flat. Hmm. Huh? You creeps are worthless. Let me show you something that does work. <laughs> I hate bugs. <laughs> Don't you, boys? With a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we just got claimed. Big time. I don't get it. What's wrong with you guys? I guess we lost our powers. Yeah, I feel like I'm running on empty. Weird. The goop in your stomach is dripping back the other way. Creepy crawlers! I feel like a million volts! That's it! You guys just need to recharge your goop power packs by hanging upside down. Now I'm ready to ace that professor! Me too! Yeah! This time we need a team effort, and that means working together. All for, all for one, one and one for all! Let's move on out! Let's, Let's creepy crawl! crawl. You 
you're sure this is gonna work? If a Super Bowl full of your goop soup doesn't work, there won't be enough left of this town to make even leftovers. Okay, here goes anything. Goop soup's on! <laughs> I think he ate something that didn't agree with him. <laughs> Not my shop. I don't have insurance. I guess the Shocker Roach just went on a crash diet. You fools! You think you've beaten the great and mighty Guggen Grime, but you're wrong! I've still got the magic maker, and there's enough goop left to make an army of Crime Grime. Ah, uh, why do you make like an egg and just beat it? <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do about Todd's car? Chill, buddy! Chris, you bum! My car! My car looks like it's been to a demolition derby! I, uh, I loaned it to a friend. You what? You're not gonna have any friends when I'm through with you. Okay, okay, you're right, Todd. I'll leave your dumb old car alone. You better. And don't forget it. Your brother's all wrong, Chris. You've got three new amigos. And we're gonna be hanging out with you for a long, long time! <laughs> From now on, you're one of us! An official Creepy Crawler Goof Mando! Ugh. Yuck! Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Help me. 
love to scare my little brother Randy. I tell him scary stories about monsters until he just begs me to stop. And I'm always teasing him by pretending to see monsters everywhere. I guess that's why no one believed me the day I saw a real monster. Until it was too late. Randy! Haven't you ever heard of the razor-toothed toe biter? What do you mean, toe biter? It got Becky and Lila next door. Well, they're playing in their waiting pool. Couldn't they see it coming? Toe butter can camouflage itself as anything, even water. You're lying! Ask Becky to take off her shoe. She'll show you. Ask her. Don't use your foot! Do it real quick. No such thing as a toe biter. Yes, there is. All her toes are gone. Lucy, would you please stop scaring your little brother? Oh, Mom, it was just a joke. How did all your toes grow back? Haven't I asked you not to tell him monster stories? Actually, the toe biter gave me back my toes because I promised to cut yours off and give them to him tonight. No! Lucy! What's the point of having a little brother if you can't torture him? Lucy, don't you have reading rangers at the library? Why don't you go and bother Mr. Mortman for a while? Well, what did you think? Two thumbs down. But Lucy, Black Beauty is a classic. It would have been better if the horse had two heads. <sighs> and big old gnarly fangs. Why don't you go pick another book? Hey, Lucy, what are you getting? Frankenstein. Cool. Are you sure, Lucy? Frankenstein is a classic as well. Yeah, but this one's got a monster. Wouldn't it be cool if they were real monsters? Well, I'm not so sure, Erin. Most people like to be frightened in movies or stories. Not in real life. Aaron, you ever notice anything weird about Mortman? Like his creepy, beady little eyes. And his sweaty little hands. When he gave me my book, it was so slimy, I almost dropped it. Yeah? Ugh. Oh, my blades. I forgot them at the library. Oh, man, I gotta get home. Oh, no big deal. I'll see you later. Classic. It's time, my plump little beauties. My, my, my little friends. I do believe we put on a little weight. Good cheap. 
coochie, coochie, coochie. Don't be shy. <sighs> It's dinner time, my furry friend. <laughs> oh, aren't you hungry? Munch, munch. <laughs> Crickets, my little friends. Say hi anymore. Hi, Dad. There's a monster at the library. Lucy, please. What kind of monster? Could you give us a hand here, please? A big, slimy, disgusting one that eats bugs. Oh, I hope this monster thing was just a phase you were going through. Life is a phase I'm going through. Well, could you go through it, please, after you've washed your hands and set the table? Dad, this is no joke. Larry, you're making them too big. I happen to like big meatballs. Doesn't anyone here believe me? His eyes popped out of his head, and he was eating bugs. And everyone here thinks I'm making it up. Gee, I wonder why. What? You don't believe me either? Calm down, Lucy. You're totally obsessed. Ooh, big word. Well, you'll believe me soon enough. I'll prove it to you. Didn't you think that the monster was the most sympathetic character in this story? Do you believe in monsters? Perhaps we all have a little monster in us, Lucy. Why don't you go pick another book while I tidy up? Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah, right. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> 
Toy, so much fun, it's spooky. Play Ghostbusters. Let's go! With your own play figures. Come on there, Ghostbusters. Jake has a magic backpack and ghost gun. Prime Evil has a real cape. Look out, humans. Ah! Pull yourself together, you rusty wreck. That's spooky! Ghostbuster figures from Shopper. So much fun, it's spooky. <laughs> How'd you get away? I think the flash blinded him. But I got the picture. I got my proof. You forgetting something, Lucy. Your library card has your address on it. Mortman knows where you live. So what? He could be on his way to your house this minute. That's not funny, Aaron. If I were you, I'd get out of there right now. Good evening, Lucy. May I come in for a minute? No. My parents aren't home right now. I mean, they'll be home any minute. I mean, they're in the bathroom. Mom, is Dad still cleaning his rifle? It's OK, Lucy. It's really you that I've come to see. You left your backpack at the library. I have it right here. This is yours, isn't it? Could you maybe just leave it on the doorstep? Please? Um, wouldn't it be easier if you open the door and let me hand it to you? I'll just set it down here. Thank you. Oh, it's no trouble. It's mm. on my way. I look forward to our next little chat.
picture that proves he's a monster. Calm down, Lucy. He followed me home today. He followed you home for no reason. Well, I forgot my knapsack in the library, and he brought it over, but... Well, that was very nice of him. He lives all the way across town. It wasn't on his way at all. Come on, we're wasting time. The photo place is gonna close. Now, Lucy... Please! <sighs> Let me see! Let me I see! I knew it! Uh. Let's go! Nice work. Randy, get into the car, please. You heard your father. You're quite the photographer. Mr. Mortman, what are you doing here? Have you been thinking about monsters again? Mr. Mortman, thanks very much for bringing home Lucy's backpack today. Oh, uh, it was nothing. I was on my way. Mr. Mortman, why don't you come over for dinner tomorrow night? Lucy's been talking a great deal about you. It'd be nice to get to know you better. Well, that would be lovely. Thank you. It's been so long since I've had a home-cooked meal. <laughs> don't you see he's a monster? The fact that he's not in this picture proves it. I don't care if he's a drooling werewolf. He's coming for dinner. Remember your best behavior. This is very kind of you. Oh, it's nothing. Our pleasure, really. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Lucy. Nice to see you again, young Randy. Will you be joining us for Reading Rangers next year? Can I sleep on it? <laughs> of course. My, what a, a lovely house. Lucy, offer Mr. Mortman a meatball. Hmm, delicious. Mm -hmm. What's for dinner? Well, it was going to be a surprise, but... Since you asked, you are. <coughs> Excuse me, I thought you said... That. That's right. You, you are. Close call. <sighs> now listen, both of you. You can never, ever let anyone know that we are monsters. We know that. And we can't have any other monsters in town either. And do you know why? Because they might tell other people about us. And they'd be frightened. And they'd chase us away. Or worse. Mr. Mortman's the first monster to come around in 20 years. Besides us, of course. That's why it took us so long to believe you, Lucy. And when you two get bigger, you're gonna get your training fangs. That's right. Before long, you and Randy will be able to transform just like your father and me. Another one! Not another Mortman. What are we gonna do? Better let him in. Hey, what's up? Just finished dinner. <laughs> oh man. Talk about time. Well, what's for dessert? Well. It was going to be a surprise, but since you asked... You like cherry pie? Sure. 
Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. And I like to see all the children out in their costumes. But when I see them, I always hope they don't forget all they know about crossing streets safely. And I hope you don't either. That's especially important when drivers can't see you well. And for you to see the cars well, it's a good idea to take off your mask when you cross. Even though it may not be night yet, it's dark enough to make things outdoors hard to see, you and the cars. It makes me so happy when I see children look to their left for cars, then right for cars, then left again before they cross. You mustn't forget all the safety rules you know on Halloween, and especially because it's dark. It's safest not to cross between parked cars. That can be very dangerous. And don't cut across yards or empty lots. When it's dark, you can't see what's there. Remembering safety rules is very important on Halloween. There's something else that can help keep you safe outside when it's dark. You'll see right away. Yes, just as I thought. They're coming up my walk now. The people who live in my house like to take pictures of the children who come by. Now you'll see what there is about their costumes that makes it easier for drivers to see them when it's dark. Do you see how easy it is to see the bright colors in the costumes? Bright colors are easier to see at night than dark colors are. But there's something else. Some parts seem to glow from the camera flash. That's how those parts will look when car headlights shine on them. Those are just pieces of special tape that reflect light very well. You can put tape like that on your costume and on your trick-or-treat bag. Some costumes already have reflecting material on them. Making your costume and your bag easy to see makes you easy to see. And that's a good way to help make Halloween safe. The safer Halloween is, the more fun it is for you and for me. That's what I think. But some people have a strange idea of fun. They think it's fun to mess up other people's things with paint. They don't think about how the people feel whose things are ruined. And some people think it's fun to throw things at cars and houses and buildings. But the people whose things they're messing up don't. I don't either. It isn't fun to spoil other people's things and make them unhappy. Some people even think it's fun to smash pumpkins. Oh no, that's not fun. Not for all the people who work so hard carving pumpkins. And especially not for us pumpkins. Whew, wow, that was close. Some people don't know what fun really is. I do, and I'll bet you do too. And I know they do. Trick-or-treating is always fun. But there are some things you should remember to help keep it fun. One thing is to always go out with friends. And have an adult come along, too. Don't ever trick-or-treat alone. And if someone you don't know very well invites you in... Would you like to come in? I have more treats inside. No, thank you. That's right. Say, no thanks. And don't eat the treats while you're collecting them. Stay in your own neighborhood. Don't get too far from home. 
Don't worry, you'll collect enough treats. People are expecting you. And even if you don't stop at houses with no outside lights on, which you shouldn't, you'll have a wonderful time at Halloween. Some of you will probably still be out when it's really dark. That's when flashlights are an especially good idea. To help you watch out for places you might fall or stumble over if you didn't see them. But remember, don't shine those flashlights into anybody's eyes, especially a driver's eyes. That could be dangerous. It isn't hard to have a safe Halloween. Just look how easy it is to see those children when they cross. They wouldn't want an accident to spoil their Halloween fun. I wouldn't want that to happen either. Trick-or-treating is almost over this Halloween for Corey and Jessica and Jeremy. It's almost time for them to head for home. But what do you do with all the treats you've collected? A lot of them are things to eat, of course. But you don't eat them all, at least not right away, that's for sure. And there might be some you won't want to eat at all. Get a grown-up to help you decide, or at least someone a lot older than you. You see, some people think it's fun to play tricks with your treats. Watch out for candy wrappers that have been torn or punctured. That might be a sign of tampering. There might be things in the candy, so break open candy bars before you eat them. Cut fruit into pieces before you eat it, just in case something's been stuck in it. Watch out for things that look like candy, but might be medicines or drugs or even poisons. Don't eat anything that doesn't look right. If it looks funny, it might not be so funny if you ate it. Treats are so much fun to collect, it'd be awful to have them spoil your Halloween fun by making you sick. Corey's treats won't make her sick, and I hope yours won't make you sick either. I hope you can have the most fun you've ever had this Halloween. Halloween can be a scary time, not because of witches or ghosts that we know aren't real, but because of real things that can spoil our fun. Just remember these few important things I've told you about. Carve your pumpkin carefully. Make sure that you can see. And make sure people can see you. Remember all your safety rules and take off your mask when you cross a street. Trick or treat in your own neighborhood, and don't keep any treats that don't look right. If you can do all that, then you won't have to worry about scary, real things happening on Halloween, right? Right. And a safe Halloween. Let's go!
I challenge you to a friendly duel. <laughs> do, do I have to? You have to. Oh, 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 as you command, almighty mean one. Yeah, Tratsy, do it, Yaki, if you dare. Oh, scatter! can beat me! Nobody can! Nobody can! Except, of course! Except? Except who? Uh, nobody, sir! Say it, brother! Say it! Except the Ghostbusters, great one! Yes, brother! Those ghost bunglers! They are a problem. Sire? Oh, Sire! I, I have an idea! You... you have an idea? <laughs> Shut up, Bratty! <laughs> What's your idea, Dentface? What? <clears throat> what we... uh... What you need to beat the ghost bunglers is something from the future, like me! <laughs> like you! <laughs> I said, shut up, Bratty! Yes, yes, your majestic meanness. Maybe you're right. Something from the future. But what? As many times as I've visited you here in the future, it never ceases to amaze me. I know what you mean, Jake. This world is a paradise. Uh, thanks to my brother's inventions. Yo! Uh, uh, Jake, help! Where are you, Eddie? In the lab! Help! <laughs> Gosh! Uh, how do I stop? Oh, no! <laughs> Let me go! you not to touch anything in the lab? Gee, Marl, I only pushed one little button. I know, Eddie, but you have to understand, in the wrong hands, my robalos could be very dangerous. And the right hands for those robalos are my hands. Scared stiff, flip face. I'm sending you two to the future. Have a good trip home, Ghostbusters. Moro's working on a new invention. He calls it a sleepy time generator. I'm sorry Moro's so busy he couldn't come to say goodbye. That's all right, Futura. I'm sorry we left him such a mess to clean up. You mean I did. I was the one who made the mess, playing with that robot. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Eddie. Just come back and visit real soon. <laughs> Ray, who's doing this? <laughs> Greetings, Morrow. Prime evil. Yes, Morrow. Now tell me how these robalos work. The robalos? What do you want my robots for? I'm going to program them to destroy Ghost Command. And with Ghost Command gone, the Ghost Busters will be finished. I'll never show you how to reprogram the Robalos. Never. Oh, we'll see about You heard what he said, Prime Evil. Never. Get her, you fools. Run 
Futura, get out of here! Save me! Tracy, do something quick! Knock it off, Tracy! We already know you're the strongest gorilla in the world! A magnet! Good idea, Trace! See you, Bozo. I don't get it. How'd Moro's robots get here? Yeah, hey, you guys. It's Moro. Listen. Ghostbusters, watch out. I tried to stop them, but my robots have been taken over by ghosts. Scared stiff and big face. They've captured Moro. Off. This gets worse and worse! Greetings, friends. As the new owner of the Robalos, I am programming them to destroy Ghost Command. Because without Ghost Command, you Ghost Bunglers are finished! Forget about Ghost Command. What about Moro? What have you done with them? And Futura! What about Futura? <laughs> Come to the future and find out if you dare. <laughs> yeah, and walk right into your trap, Primeval. <laughs> I'm afraid we haven't got a choice. We have to go. Let's go, go, Buster! <laughs>
Sweet home! to me, guys. Well, let's get down there and spring it. Keep a sharp lookout. Morrow's main lab is just ahead. to do, don't you? Do it! No, not the sleepy time bubble. Deserted. Mama, maybe it's not as deserted as you think, Jake. Look. And over there, look. Anybody got any ideas? Yeah, just one. Run! Hurry! Oh, no. going to take a nap? Is down. And only one to go. Absolutely. <laughs> That's 
that's how I got away when they grabbed my brother. But now, how do we get them out of those bubbles, Futura? Oh, gee. Moro just invented the sleepy bubbles last week. Oh, I don't know how to get them out. Uh oh That doesn't sound good. Ugh. What doesn't sound good? <laughs> Funny! Huh. Oh, what's going on around here? That goof keg Jake calls me, wakes me up, and when I get here, I find him taking a nap. But Jake's not taking a nap. He's trapped inside that bubble. Oh, yes. Please get him out of there. Hurry. Oh, of course. So that's why he called. Buddy, some ghosts will be here any minute. Please hurry. Hmm. Let's see. Twiggity dee, twiggity top. A wave of my hand and the bubbles go pop. <laughs> what? Tracy, am I glad to see you? Oh, thanks, buddy. You really came through. My, <laughs> oh, my pleasure, Jake. Now I'm going back to sleep. Please, don't say sleep. What? You left Jake and Tracy unguarded with Futura still on the loose? Get back there, you bumbling buffoons, before she helps them escape. Yes, sir! It was pretty simple, Jake. Once Primeval had reprogrammed the Robalos to attack Ghost Command, he used my transporter to beam them to Earth. Can you change them? I, I mean, make those Robalos good again. I'm afraid not. Once they're reprogrammed, they can't be changed back. But we must stop them! Uh, they can cause a lot of trouble. Without the control box, it's impossible. The control box, huh? Well, I've got a plan. Listen up. This is how we'll take care of fib face and scared stiff. Come on, bucket brain, Harry. Oh, no! Fire! Oh, 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 oh. Get ready, Jake! Here they come! Okay, we're safe. Yes, and we still got the control box. Not for long, Fib Face. Bye bye, guys. We'll be back, Ghostbusters. But not for a long, long time. Guys, it's ready. Moro has the transporter set up and ready to go. Just push a button and poof. Scared stiff and all those pesky robalos will go bye-bye. Only problem is... <gasps> Where do we send them? <laughs> I know just the place. Headquarters! What's going on around here? Where's Scared Stew? Where's the face? Oh, it'll I get my hands on him? My heart was really destroyed. This has been the worst day of my life. Oh, hi there, boys and girls. Remember in today's show how Eddie got in trouble by playing with the robot's control box? Well, it all started out because he fooled around with something he didn't understand. When you're growing up, it's natural to be curious. But when you fool around with things you don't understand, it's downright dangerous. Things like electricity, pills, or berries on a bush. Play around with them, and you're playing with trouble. Handle only the things you know are safe, and you'll be taking a big step toward avoiding accidents. Bye!
Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. The bats are out tonight. The ghosts are getting ready. Things will give you such a fright. I hope your nerves are steady. It's a night for a trick or treat and a spooky weird refrain. So come and take a seat, cause it's Halloween again. What's that you say? It looks like just a feast? Well, don't go away. The guest of honor is a beast. The call is going out for you. Yes, there are ghouls that lie in wait. They know exactly what to do. They're on the prowl, and you're the bait. You're the bait. You're the bait. You're the bait. <laughs> Well, you frightened? Golly, what's there to be frightened of? Plenty. Oh, Halloween just means getting dressed up in costumes. Do you know how that custom got started? Nope. It goes back to people called druids who lived a long time ago. You mean before there was television? I mean, a couple thousand years ago. This long ago? Almost. The Druids lived in Ireland and England. They thought that spirits returned to Earth on Halloween night, so the people dressed up to look like ghosts, hoping that the real spirits would leave them alone. Huh. That's how trick-or-treating got started? That's right. They gave treats to the spirits so that the spirits wouldn't play tricks on them. Nowadays, trick-or-treating is for kids. And you know, don't you, that trick-or-treaters should go with an adult. And they should dress in light-colored costumes so they can be seen at night. Definitely. Hmm. Some people have no respect. Anyway. Wise trick-or-treaters don't go into a stranger's house even if invited. They throw away anything that's unwrapped, and they carefully examine all treats. And if they do find anything harmful, they tell the police. If you use common sense, trick-or-treating is fun. But sometimes it's easier to have a party instead. That's an old Halloween tradition, too. <laughs> I like parties. <laughs> Would you like me to arrange for some ghosts and goblins to come to your party? Would that scare you? Well, well. Oh, come on. In the old days, people expected spirits to show up at their Halloween gatherings. So they got lots of good food, including apples and nuts, and put on big feasts so that the spirits who came would be well-fed and wouldn't cause trouble. Of course, people ate some of the feasts, too. One reason people had Halloween parties is that they used to celebrate their New Year's on Halloween. Huh. I guess they didn't have a calendar handy. <laughs> Gosh, New Year's parties in October and believe it in ghosts. People sure used to be mixed up. You don't believe in ghosts? Uh, I don't think so. What? <laughs> Don't be too sure. Well, seeing a ghost would be kind of scary. Come on, this is just make-believe and superstition, isn't it? Well, yes. But on Halloween, it's fun to talk about superstitions that people used to believe. 
Like what? Oh, that there were witches who were able to cast magic spells by stirring secret ingredients in a big black cauldron. Or that anybody out after sundown was a friend of an evil spirit and could put a spell on you just by looking at you. Gosh, are all superstitions about bad stuff? Oh, no. For example, cats were thought to be lucky on Halloween. If a cat sat beside you, it meant good luck. And if a cat jumped into your lap, it meant even better luck. Unless the cat is bigger than you. <laughs> Gosh. There was another superstition that if a fellow put nine grains of oats in his mouth and went out walking, he'd end up marrying the girl whose name he heard first. I guess it were. It was also believed that if you looked into a mirror at midnight, you'd see your true love in the reflection. <laughs> yep. I guess that one works, too. And, of course, Halloween was supposed to be a special time for fortune-telling. Golly! I wonder what's in store for me? <laughs> oh, I foresee that you'll have lots of outdoor adventures. <coughs> and you'll get a big bang out of meeting someone special. Woo-wee, stop predicting. <laughs> A trifle terrified, are you? Come on, I'm educated. I don't believe in all these superstitions. Well, Halloween's fun, even if we don't really believe all these superstitions. But all the same, remember my refrain. If you get a scary call from a ghost that's boogie, short boogie, or boogie, tall, boogie, boogie. remember that I warned you of creatures that yell, Boo! Ghosts and ghouls and witches are beings that cause twitches. And Halloween's the day on which they have their way. Look out for black cats. Watch for flying bats. Look for monsters as scary as they can be. And most of all, look out for me. No, I'm for Halloween, Peter. Well, after our gig at the junior high this afternoon, I'm taking Lynn Stacy to a party at Donald Trump's place. The quintuple billionaire? The same. I think he wants to talk to me about buying the afterlife. How about you? Well, we're all going trick-or-treating. We thought maybe you'd like to come along. Even Slimer's going. He's been working all week on a costume. <laughs> Made it himself. Wait a minute. Slimer's a ghost, right? I mean, most people dress up as ghosts for Halloween, right? So what's Slimer going as? He says it's something really scary. You think this would go with green? Slimer? Yes, Fox? Don't move. Peter! Oh, I have been like a slime. Yes, five years I've waited to do that. Five long years! Hi. I'm 
My name's Stacy. I'm supposed to meet Peter here. Oh, uh, yeah. He was here a second ago. I'll get it. You, babe! Hi, Petey. Oh, it's <laughs> Kind of girl. Honey bunch. Creep. What did I say? What did I do? Wait. Wait. I love you. Well, I, we've hardly met. No, I was. Uh, uh, she. Uh, oh boy. Never mind. Come on in. This isn't. You didn't. Slimer, you're dead. Oh, good observation, Peter. You know, there are times I think life is one big bullet with my name on it. You, you are want us to, to do, do what? Simple. I want you to help me get rid of Halloween once oh. and for all. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Well, I think I'll uh, just go lie down for a little while. Surely you don't like monsters and ghosts and such. No, absolutely not. We don't like ghosts at all. Oh. Well, not as a general rule. But that's got nothing to do with Halloween. That's an important day. We all like Halloween. There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with kids dressing up as ghosts and monsters and demons? Letting their imaginations run rampant? Nothing wrong with that, I ask you? Nope. So who asked you? I tell you, Halloween is a menace. It must be stopped. That's why I've come to you for help. I am the chairman of Citizens United Against Halloween and lots of other stuff we don't like. Well, not to pry. I, I mean, I'm just an accountant, and, uh, and by the way, you probably paid too much for that suit, but uh, what's all this other stuff you're against? All comics, most television toys, many books, but mostly Halloween. It's fantasy. Not good for kids at all. It serves no purpose. Wrong. Magic. Mystery. They're important. Halloween is part of a tradition that goes back centuries. According to legend... Forgot to mention, we're against legends, too. Also, books about legends, they're not healthy. Hey! No, Mr. Crowley, eating too many candy bars isn't good for you, either. Uh, uh, uh yeah, Egon, that's right. Uh, it's especially not healthy to hide them like that. <laughs> it's in his socks, Slimer. Get away. Get away. Well, we no, don't have any candy. Get away. For the record, interpret this as a no. Hello, What did it ever do for us? Well, I'll show them. Yes, Dr. Crowley. We have my machine. It's all ready. Yes, Dr. Crowley. Except the part we needed from the Ghostbusters. Oh. That's right. We needed their PKE meter to help focus the machine, didn't we? Don't worry. While they were talking to you, no one noticed me pick up this. You stole this, didn't you? Yes, Dr. Crowley. Stealing isn't good, but we need it. So much for that moral dilemma. Yes, Dr. Crowley. Trick or treat! In your face. Okay, everybody, next question. Hands up. Who thinks of trick or treat when you think of Halloween? All right. How many of you know where that comes from? Let me answer that. Egon? <clears throat> 2,000 years ago, October 31st was the end of the old year, and the ancient Celtic priests, called Druids, held a celebration. It was the birth of the festival we now call Halloween. It was... It was a party! When the sun goes down and the night goes cold And the wind is whistling through the trees It's a celebration running through the nation Dancing and rocking on Halloween Can you feel the magic moving? See the moon shining bright There's thunder in the streets, wonder in the shadows Touch it, old magic. Touch it. 
Touching old magic Touching old magic We call it Halloween Take the stars in your hand Don't be afraid of the night Halloween this year, Ray. I hate Halloween. Even now, it's starting. Children are putting on their fright masks, getting ready to go trick-or-treating. Well, not tonight. Tonight, everything changes. Tell me it's ready, Fairweather. Give me my electronic, positronic, anti-Halloween machine. Everything's ready, Dr. Crowley. All systems are go. Take this, Halloween! Fairweather, I feel positively poetic. Those signs have got to go. Not good for you, you know. Don't like jack-o'-lanterns. I say pumpkins shouldn't smile. Smash and bash and crash them from the east side to the Nile. We'll have no trick or treating, not tonight. Get rid of those clothes, that candy. You will your sight. It's the electronic, positronic, anti Halloween machine. And if you think I'm being mean, haha, <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Guys, what's happening? Egon, the lady asked a question. What's happening is trouble. Major, major trouble. Oh, I feel so much better now. Say goodbye to scary stories. Say goodbye to haunted houses. Goodbye to Irving, Vernon and Poe. Goodbye, Dickens, Shelley, and Wall. Goodbye, Mr. Bradbury. Try not to take it personally. Ha 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 ha. Shh. Listen. You see, Fairweather, not a Halloween sound. Quiet as a test tube, eh, Fairweather? Fairweather? What the? <laughs> what is it? What? What's happening? What's happening? Just what we were hoping for. <laughs> Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. There's something strange in the neighborhood. So who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! Each sold separately. Have no fear. Venkman, Stamp, and Spangler are here. So are these ghosts. They've got exoplasm. We've been goofed. Now what? Stay puffed, Marshmallow Man. Let's show this pile of dessert who's boss. Activate Neutrona Blaster. We ain't afraid of them. Ghost. Peter Venkman, Ectoplasm, Stay Puff, Marshmallow Man, and other figures each sold separately. Ghostbusters, new from... Get away. Well, why are you tormenting me? You worked for me, remember? No. We used you and your machine. It was easy, preying on people's fears. We needed a portal to open the door to the other side, and you were the one. All of this is your doing. We couldn't have done it without your help. You forgot the first rule of fanatics. When you become obsessed with the enemy, you become the enemy. You showed up. Those things, they're everywhere. We know. Believe me, we know. <laughs> well, isn't there anything we can do? Stay inside. Lock the door and don't come out until it's over. If it's ever over. So 
you're saying this is like uh, bad, right? I'm saying we're doomed. That counts. Still, we can't just give up. We only knew what caused all this. I have a theory, though I'd rather not say until I'm sure. No! What? What's that? My boss and yours. <laughs> Hold on. For your instruction, it's all gonna change now. The boogaloo is back in town. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, you little kids, get this. Everything you see destroyed, the world is just a joy. Let the sky explode. The things are blowing cold. I want to pulverize, disseminate, and if it stands, violate. Now that the waiting time is done, look at the havoc we created, but we won. It took 2,000 years, but Boogaloo is back in time. Yeah, Boogaloo's back in town. Okay, listen to this. You still don't get it. How can people still forget it? But thanks for all of your assistance. Nothing pays off like persistence. Hold on. For your instructor, it's all gonna change now. That Boogaloo is back in town. He's back in town. Boogaloo. Boogaloo is back in town. Calls coming in from all over. The president has declared a state of national emergency. Do not. Pete, do not go outside. We... We are now in charge. The Halloween deal has been broken. So now we're back to stay. Get used to the idea, everybody. It's gonna be fun, fun, fun. So long for now, and have a swell day. I knew it. I was right. Yeah, you really should stand 10 feet back when you watch TV. Wait a minute. You mentioned something about a Halloween deal, right? Yes. 2,000 years ago, the Earth was infested by demons, but the Druids struck a deal. The worst of the demons would go off to the Netherworld on one condition. Let me guess. They wanted us to remember them. Exactly. Halloween. But now Halloween is gone. Our old friend Crowley. Precisely. You saw how he made everything to do with Halloween just vanish? Yeah, I'd say that uh, constitutes breach of contract. If we don't restore Halloween and send these creatures back where they came from before midnight, the contract is broken permanently. Then we'll never get rid of them. What time is it now? 11.30. Oh, boy. Wait a minute. If all these things have come through and they're partying and getting together like we've seen, then wouldn't they want to break out all their buddies? The containment system! Janine! <laughs> only heard it once before, but that sounds like a containment unit exploding. Oh, man. Hey, it could be worse. What? Whoa! 
<laughs> okay, so the firehouse is gone, Ecto-1's been destroyed, we're out of ghost traps, and we've only got another 10 minutes of power left in our packs. Egon, you got a plan? Not a one. I do. These things came through a door. We gotta find it and close it. Egon? That way, the Times Square district. The place is crawling with them. Then that's where we have to go. He's nuts, you know. Yes, I know. Hey, heck, somebody's gotta keep an eye on him. Okay, who brought the dips and chips? Whoa! You looking for me, flesh heads? Help! Over here! Help! Over here! I'm sorry I stole your PKE meter! I... Peter, if we can get to the machine, we might be able to reverse it and restore Halloween. Uh, yeah, that's pretty close to my plan. Go for it. Ray and I'll distract them. Hey, Boogaloo, you're ugly and your mother dresses you funny. That's cute. I hate cute. Whoa! <laughs> Go! Uh, uh, uh oh! My turn. <laughs> How come they're always shooting at us? It's in your contract, Ray. Oh. This has got to be it. Hit it. They broke it. Even if we had the time, I couldn't put it back together. Now we're doomed! See your house from here. Oh, where's he gone? It's busted, all right. We've had it. Ghostbusters! My name's Emma. I live next door. Let me help you guys. Let's get him. No way. Look, it's dangerous out here. Well, I'm not afraid. That's not the point. No, wait. That is the point. That's exactly the point. Almost midnight. In two minutes, the promise humans made to honor Halloween will be forever broken, and we'll be here to stay. Not yet. Whoa! You forgot a little something. We have one last weapon. A child? <laughs> and what do you want? Trick or treat. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Aren't you afraid of me? Nope. Thought we'd forgotten about that, hadn't you? Halloween is more than pumpkins, black cats, and trick-or-treating. It's about kids rediscovering wonder. That's why we play monsters, so we won't be afraid of monsters anymore. We take back the night once a year because it belongs to the children. They know the Halloween lesson. If you're not afraid, it can't hurt you. You wanted to see Halloween? You wanted proof that we remembered? Don't look in stores or pumpkin fields or bags of candy. Look right here. Tell me a Halloween story. Halloween's still here, alive and well. So don't you think it's about time you split? We got a contract, remember? As we like to say here in the Big Apple, beat it, slime head. No, no!
What happened? Yes. How are you doing today? Peter, what time is it? It's, uh, it's 8 o'clock. We got the evening back. Great! Hey, I gotta go because my dad's taking me trick or treating. Well, I guess we earned the right to do it all over again. And we're gonna do it right this time, aren't we, Mr. Crowley? I have no idea what you're talking about. None of this was my fault at all. It just proves my point. Why, well, I bet I'll double my contributions after this, and I'll try again, and next time I'll... I'll... Ah! Yeah! Ow. The perfect beginning to the perfect night, eh, guys? Yeah, Winston, you got that right. So who's up for a little trick-or-treating? I mean, the night's young, magic's in the air, and we've already got the costumes. Yeah, you got it. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Tonight is Halloween. The night when witches, goblins, and ghosts howl and shriek and scare the life out of people. But unlike the other ghosts, is Casper. He doesn't want to scare people. He just wants to be friendly. Here's some candy for Casper. I like you. Let's go inside. 
So, off to the donkey, try and go. that the Blackwater Lodge is now reopened for business. of the black water Signing up for the Torrington Tough Enough Club. They do waterfall climbing, triple triathlons, <laughs> grizzly boxing, you know, tough stuff. Stuff you wouldn't be interested in. 
Oh, really? And why wouldn't I be interested? Well, you know. I know? What do I know? What's the problem? Uh... Hmm... Well, how can I put it? Because you're a... wimp. <gasps> a wimp? Are you kidding? Please, I'm as tough as you are any day. Excuse me, but aren't you the same person who had Java open her nail polish jar this morning? Ugh. That wasn't nail polish, it was cuticle strengthener, which, as everybody knows, is a highly adhesive substance. <laughs> well, whatever you say, Di. <laughs> the center! It's coming from under the step. Stand back, <gasps> I'll lift it. Hmm. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> Thanks, but I can move it just fine by myself. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I did it! In your face, Martin. Hi, Diana. Oh. Hi, <laughs> Jeff. Come on, let's get moving before Diana embarrasses herself any further. One mystery cleared. Diana Lockhart. Cleared. Java the Caveman. Cleared. Hey, guys! Billy, my man, hit me! Whoop, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, huh. Billy, hit Java! <laughs> I can do secret handshakes, too! Give me five, Billy! <laughs> Don't look at me! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I need a little practice. Oh, uh, look, here we are. Hmm. <laughs> who is that? Uh, not who you think it is. Never mind, I'll find out for myself. Hi there, you an agent too? Cause I was thinking we could team up and... Whoa, hey, it was just a simple question. No need to get all testy. Don't take it personally, Martin. Amber's not from around these parts. She's a creature from the Omega Nebula. They have the ability to cloak themselves as humans. If it wasn't for their bad manners, you'd never know the difference. <laughs> Sounds a little like Martin. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Now, let's get down to business, shall we? Huh? I want you to investigate the haunting of a resort lodge near Vancouver. You mean an old-fashioned ghost? Oh, I love the classics. Classic scams, you mean. I smell a big-time hoax. Hmm, that's why I'm sending you to find out the truth. Billy? This way, guys. Hmm. Don't even think about it, Martin. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're finally here. My name is Susan Bridges. I'm the manager here at Blackwater Lodge. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. So, what kind of ghost you got? Poltergeist? Screamer? Headless? Zombie? Ectoplasm? Who? <laughs> I'm not sure. All I know is that there's been some strange occurrences over the past few days. Oh, what kind of occurrences? Things disappearing, strange noises, doors and windows opening and closing on their own, and some guests claim to have heard an old Victrola playing music. Huh? Well, what's so weird about that? It's been broken for years. <gasps> okay, now we're talking. Look, I want this mystery solved quickly and quietly. It's the first week of business, and it could make or break the launch. Anything else? Um, there is one more thing. Awesome! Woo 
looks like the ectoplasmic residue left by an angry spirit. Either that or a housekeeping effort gone terribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my partner has a very active imagination and an awful sense of humor. Anyway, a slime scan should tell us more about our mystery goo, right, Martin? Right. You watch activated. Slime scan selected. Sample is of unknown composition. Slime scan inconclusive. That could have been more helpful. <laughs> Something smell funny. You're right, Jav. Something does smell funny. And it's not Martin this time. <laughs> uh, it smells like tobacco. Hmm. <gasps> huh. Hmm. It's been used recently. That's odd, considering the library is always locked and I have the only key. Well, who does this pipe belong to? Phyllis Blackwater, the last manager. This was his favorite room in the lodge. Maybe he's responsible for all the weird happenings. Old employees sometimes carry grudges and he probably still has keys. That's impossible. He passed away over a hundred years ago. <gasps> Come on! Activity. Oh, I have to take a closer look. Hey, no fair! Where'd you go? Java, some help, please! <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> gotcha. No gotcha. <gasps> this can't be good. Cool. What that? It's an old pocket watch. One of the guests must have dropped it. On the ceiling? Look, the initials say PB, as in Phyllis Blackwater. This watch must have been his. PB could stand for a lot of things, Martin. Like Peter Benchley, or Paul Bunyan, or Pearl Bailey. Oh yeah? Look behind you! <gasps> I'm afraid there's something I haven't told you. We had a ceremony opening night, and that picture fell off the mantle and broke. Then the windows just flew open. Like something trapped in the photograph was released? What are you talking about? Photos have always been linked to paranormal activity. Many cultures even believe that a camera can steal your soul, imprisoning it within a picture. So? So, Phyllis must have had his soul trapped in the photograph. It escaped when the glass was broken. It makes total sense. Yeah, if you're a total lunatic, it's obviously a hoax. Don't worry, we'll get to the bottom of it. Well, you'll have to get to the bottom of it alone, because I've had enough! <laughs> huh. Is it me? Or did this place just get ten times creepier? Java have bad feeling about this. Relax, guys. I'll call Billy and ask her for some background info on Phyllis. No need! Yeah. Wow, that was fast. Exactly why I've won the center's eager beaver award three years running. Anyway, I found out that old Phyllis wasn't only the manager. He part owned the Blackwater. And that is until his business partners turned on him and the bank foreclosed on his mortgage. No wonder he's angry. But Phyllis loved this place more than anything else in the world and refused to leave, even after they shut off the heat. <laughs> when they came to check on the joint, they found Phyllis frozen solid in the ballroom, sitting in front of a camera. 
probably the same old camera I landed on earlier. And let me guess, that creepy old photo in the ballroom was found in that camera? Ding, 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 ding. Give the lady a prize. Well, at least now we know what we need to do. Catch Phyla's spirit and get it back in the photograph. And just how are we going to do that? <sighs> huh? Stay right there. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. I should have worn a costume. Yo, Bo Peep, what you got in your bag? Introducing Roy Rogers' Big Chicken Deal. Two plump and juicy pieces of fried chicken, hot, crisp fries, and a fresh baked biscuit. Roy Rogers' Big Chicken Deal, just $1.99. Mmm. Don't you even think about it. Working. Why can't one of you guys be the bait? It doesn't have to be you. I just thought you were tough enough. But if you're chicken, Java will do it. Right, Joff? No way. Java not stupid. I'm tougher than both of you combined. That's what I wanted to hear. Now, uh, go be more, uh, bait to E. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when he does that. Hello, Mr. Blackwater? I have some things that belong to you. Okay, well, I guess if you don't want them, I'll just have to throw them away. <laughs> uh, Mr. Blackwater, sir, I wasn't really gonna throw your stuff away. I just wanted to get your attention. Honest. <laughs> Ah. That's our cue! Ah. Whoopsie, my bad. Martin, get me out of this thing right now! Oh. Oh. Hey, where'd our ghosty go? You'll die. Are you okay? You look kind of weird. Oh. Uh. Just ripped my favorite shirt. Not shirt, Diana! Oh, you mean the whole possession thingy? Ah, don't sweat it. All we gotta do is suck the spirit of Phyllis back out of her. How? Simple. I take her photo. Trust me, Job. Diana will be her old wimpy, can't open her own nail polish self in no time. Alpha goggles selected. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, little Miss Tough Enough. Time to smile pretty for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not exactly the attractive pose I was looking for, but it'll do. Ha! I got you in your face, Diana! I don't think it worked, Martin. Judging by the freaky new updo and the sudden ability to levitate, I'd have to agree with you, Joff. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here. I think we're safe. <laughs> but not out of the clear. Not until I figure out why my little camera trick didn't work. Maybe camera broken? The camera works fine. Wait a minute. Ugh. Sitting in front of a camera. Camera! Duh! We have to use the original! But original in ballroom. Hey! Did Java no like music? Can't say I blame you there. Whoa! Check it out! Is it Diana? No! Something even scarier! A spontaneous redecorating job! Funky. 
It's like the room's changed back to how it looked in Phylus' time. Like the Lodge is coming alive, remembering what it was like. Java scared. Don't be. Now we've got the secret weapon that's gonna squash our Spectre. And I think I know just where she is. library was Phyllis's favorite room, which means Diana's probably pretty fond of it, too. Plus, she's a book geek by nature. Where else would she hang? Martin Wright. Smart. Thanks. Now we have to be really quiet if we want to sneak up and snap her picture. Java promise. No make sound. Approach will work too. Your possessing days are over, Violet. Now, Java. <laughs> it didn't work again. How can that be? <laughs> Look, if you're still angry about the wimpy comment, I'm sorry. You're tough, Di. It's just in your own special way. This lodge is mine. Get out! I think we better do what the lady says. Fuck! Get out! Now unstuck. <laughs> I'm starting to believe her! Come on! We'll lose her in here! Which way? behind us anymore. Java? Java! <laughs> Diana, wait! Think about what you're doing! It's me! Marty! <laughs> hey, where'd she go? Java? He fainted. Huh? But what could make a caveman faint? Ah! Ask a stupid question. Ah! Yeah! before you get hypothermia. What am I doing out here? You should probably ask him.
Good work, team. But I'm shutting this place down. It's just too dangerous. Yeah, this lodge has a way of getting inside you. <laughs> Is that another one of your goofy jokes? What? Oh, no way. I'm not gonna mess with you anymore. Diana, tough. Uh, much tougher than I ever thought. You came through a classic possession better than any guy I've ever seen. You can join the Tough Enough Club anytime you want. <laughs> Please, like I would join your stupid group? I've had enough of all this tough stuff. I'm taking a weekend off for rest and relaxation. Really? Now let's get out of here. I'm in serious need of a hot bubble bath. and do the soul cat. Why can't you guys dance? Because I have inoperable hemorrhoids. Ow! Sabrina the Teenage Witch tonight at 8.30. Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. There's 
nothing like a cool drink of water to revive your spirits. <laughs> Olive! <laughs> and join me for a midnight snack. Perhaps a little screech cobbler? It's good for what flails you. Or maybe something really gross. Nice, fresh, carrot. Ah, it's no use. No matter what I eat, I just can't sleep. Nightmares. That's the problem. I haven't been having any. 
maybe a little dread time story can scare up a good fright's rest. Now here's a good one. I call it Pleasant Screams. <laughs> Where am I? Who am I? Ah! Oh, a graveyard. Great. What am I doing here? Well, maybe I'm... Oh, my. Oh, that's ridiculous. If I were, I'd be in the ground. <laughs> okay. Oh! Uh. Hey! Watch where you're going, young lady. Well, for your information, Mr. 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 Purdy? Yes. That's right. I am. Felix Purdy. And you, you're, um. Jenny. Jenny Lawson. We know each other? Yes, but from where? What else? What else can you remember? I don't know. The rest is a blank. Me too. For a moment, I thought... <laughs> I thought I was dead. <laughs> we are not dead, Mr. Purdy. But they are! Bye! What? <laughs> Idea. Darn lock. We gotta get out of here, Jenny. Help me. Uh, Mr. Purdy? Hey! Why, hello. What's your problem? Polite. Be polite now. He's got a key. <laughs> wow! <Well. laughs> what are you waiting for? <laughs> Take the key, Mr. Purdy, or make him open it. Listen, Buster, I lift weights, you know. Now, either you give us that key, or... <gasps> now you did it. Me? I didn't hear you saying pretty, please. Mr. Purdy, look! Who are you? Hey! Don't worry, Jenny. I'm right behind you. Dream. Really bad dream. <laughs> Mr. Purdy, move! Mr. Purdy, move it! What in blazes? Ooh. Ooh. What did you do that for? To keep you from being a stain on the sidewalk. I'm too old for this. I don't understand anything. You, this? Join the club. Where are we? Tokyo? I'm out of here. Wait! Listen, Jenny, I think we should stick together. Yeah, right. So you have something to hide behind in case no face shows up again? Well, yeah. But <laughs> it's for your protection. Okay, okay, mine too. But there's safety in numbers, okay? You know, two heads are better than one. <gasps> any trails? Ah! This can't be happening! 
happening? Great. Why don't you tell that to Godin? Chicken McNuggets. Rommel, nice to see you in this neck of the woods. Come on. What are you making? We're staring up secret sauces. <laughs> For dipping. We're ready, boss. Let's make sauce. <laughs> oh, well, at least I got my hair done. I have an idea. whoop de doo McDonald's sauces. You can always count on them to be terrific. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. I've got Let you. Let go of me. <laughs> Mr. Purdy? Jenny? Now where are we? Why is all this happening, Mr. Purdy? I want it to stop. Now! So do I, Jenny. <laughs> but no such luck. Why should I go in there? Jolly, 
Well, a knight in shining armor. Hmm, just what I need. Thanks! Ah! Not again! Who are you? What are you? Why... Why do I feel I know you? Answer me! Never mind. Are you in there? No, I'm not. What do you think? Come on! Come on! Help me! Help! Please! Back off, bud! Mr. Purdy? I'm here, Jenny. Where's here, Mr. Purdy? I'm afraid to look. A swamp. We're in a swamp. Ugh. Why doesn't anything happen to us? We've been swallowed, thrown, trampled. I don't know. All I know is I can't take this anymore. I'm losing it. Why is this happening to me? Oh, don't be such a wimp. This is no picnic for me either. Well, you're not exactly helping things. At least I'm not freaking out. Yet. Wait a second. Wait a second? That's it! What? That's why we don't remember anything but our names. It all makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Nothing happens to us because... because this isn't real. Jenny, this is all a dream. You really are losing it, Mr. Purdy. But whose dream is it? What the? This is all you're doing, isn't it? This is your dream! Give me a break. You're not putting me through another second of this. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up now! Oh, for Pete's sake, Mr. Purdy. If this were my dream, why am I putting myself through it, too? Think about it, Sherlock. While I row us quickly to the shack. Shack? Where? To your left. Why are we going there? Because we have to. Why? Because we're being chased by a blob! That's why! Oh, what next? I had to ask. Wrong! Yeah! Yeah! Is it me, or are we getting used to this? Kinda. Oh, tombstones. Think it's a hint? Let's just hope the place is blob-proof. Dream or not, this is all so uh, childish. Blobs, zombies, two-headed giant reptiles. Yeah. Sounds like a great triple feature at the drive-in. Jenny! What? Yeah! Cute, huh? You're into stone. He seems very serious. Yeah.
anything else, dear? Soft drink? Tea? Look out! Oh, what next? Hey, watch the suit! I know why the faceless guy didn't show up. What? Oh, you didn't get him, Mr. Purdy. You didn't get him. It doesn't matter, Jenny. This is never going to stop because this is a dream. His dream. He's the one who's been doing all this to us again and again and again. Putting us through this never-ending torture chamber. Who are you? He's got to be someone we know. Oh, Mr. Purdy? Someone we, we weren't nice to? Obviously. Someone we were mean to. I'm following you. Someone we tortured? Oh, oh my! Daryl Craigman! I remember! I'm a teacher! I'm in your class! And so is Daryl Craigman! Figures, you little twerp! Sleeping in my class again, eh, Mr. Craigman? Make him wake up, Mr. Purdy! Make him wake up! Wake up, Craigman! Wake up! Do you hear me? Wake, wake up! up! Wake, wake up! up! What? Huh? <laughs> Rise and shine, Mr. Craigman. Did you have a nice snooze? Yeah. I... I mean... Uh... Sorry, sir. Well, sorry, sir, doesn't cut it, mister! Daryl's gonna get it. It's just... I, I have a hard time with Latin, sir. Oh, that's right. How silly of me. Comic books and monster movies are more your cup of tea, Mr. Craigman. I tried to transfer to a creative writing class, Mr. Purdy. No one transfers out of my class, mister. No one! How'd you like that? <clears throat> <sighs> Mr. Purdy? <sighs> Mr. Purdy? Mr. Purdy? Tokyo? Daryl's falling asleep again, Mr. Purdy! What? <laughs> Mr. Purdy! No! Purdy. Not again! <laughs> what a nightmare. Oh. Gee, Mr. Purdy, <laughs> I don't know what to say except thanks for the transfer. Don't mention it, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> he means dozy, Daryl. Enough of that, young lady. Yes, sir. Sorry, Daryl. Whoa. Uh, sir? How come you're being so nice to me all of a sudden? Well, Daryl, let's just say... Uh, no, uh, let's just... Well, let's just say I finally woke up and smelled the coffin. Uh, I mean, the coffee! <laughs> oh. Well, that little chiller did the trick. I'm a new crypt keeper. I guess being a rat to a mousy type like Daryl really doesn't pay. Just ask Mr. Purdy. He learned the hard way that it's not healthy to go to bed with a guilty conscience. Your dreams might come back to haunt you. Hey, a nice big scatapple. Yuck, no worms. Until next time, boils and ghouls. Pleasant screams. <laughs> Oh.
This is a Two Guns production. you did and I know that you love the taste of a Diet Dr. Pepper. As usual, we have to move on because we have some lovely artwork to share with you today. But up next, we have a wonderful painting to show off from the Yizzle's older sister. This was a painting made from my older sister Ke Keanu for him because he loves Beavis. I love Beavis. Beavis is a wonderful, wonderful individual. He loves Diet Dr. Pepper. Now today we have something very special for you. We have one of our wonderful Max Squad members wants to show one of their paintings. So here this is, a piece from one of our Max Squad members, Jason Thompson. And as usual, if you have a piece, just like Jason did, you can hit us up at our email at smc.maxout at gmail.com and send in your piece. And we will showcase it next to either the Yizzle's wonderful work or some of her sisters. But that's all we have today. So make sure if you haven't already that you head over and you mark a bow! 
Max Smash, that like button, and subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure that you head on over to the KJ and the Yizzle channel. Give us a check out, give us a like, and give us a subscribe. But for now, stick around for our Halloween closer. And we know that you're gonna like it because it's a spooky one, ladies and gentlemen. But we're out for now. Make sure that you are here next week for week two of Halloween. Excuse me. Be with us in the only place to be for Saturday mornings. Where is that, Yizzle? Saturday morning, come to Max Out! We're called the Midnight Society. Separately, we're very different. We like different things. We go to different schools, and we have different friends. But one thing draws us together, the dark. Each week, we gather around this fire to share our fears and our strange and scary tales. It's what got us together, and it's what keeps bringing us back. This is a warning to all who join us. You're going to leave the comfort of the light and step into the world of the supernatural. Hey, watch it, man. I'm sorry. Frank Moore. You're here to be considered as a new member of the Midnight Society. Yeah, what's with the blindfold? This meeting place is secret? Yeah, and you're not in yet. Swell. Who sponsors Frank? I do. He's a good guy. Yeah, but can he tell a good story? Who said that? To be a member, you have to tell us a scary tale. Then we vote. And it has to be unanimous or you're not in. You ready? Hey, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Ooh, I'm scared now. Sorry. Not unless you get in. You're the sponsor, Dave. You got to start it. <laughs> Remember how to do it? Just say the word. Anytime. OK, let's do it. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. I call this story the tale of the Phantom Cab. Denny and Buzz were brothers. Denny was big, strong, and smart. Buzz was, well, kind of a geek who wanted to prove himself to his big brother. What neither guy knew was that on this hiking trip, Buzz was gonna get the chance. So where are we, Tonto? This is strange. We're lost, aren't we? Don't sweat, Denny. I know how to plot a course. You never trust me. 
I did trust you, and you got us lost, Cheeseball. We're not lost. Watch it. Great lame wad. Now we're lost and we can't read the map. You are such a loser. I'm not a loser. And we're not lost. Look, there's the ridge we came up on. We can circle back and take the red trail. Man, this is whacked. Watch the edge. Whoa! <laughs> Grab my hand! I can't! I'll fall! Grab me, you turn! Hey, I saved the compass. I should have let you fall. The guys really were lost. It was just a pain at first, but nighttime was coming on fast, and it was getting cold. It doesn't make sense. You even know how to use this? Give me a break. We've been going south for hours. We should have been in town by now. Look, the needle points north, and we're headed south. What can I say? That the way you always hold it? Yeah, so? Your belt buckle, genius. It's metal. The needle's always gonna point to it because it's a magnet. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. We've been going the wrong way all day. Now we're lost and it's freezing. You are worthless. No, no. I know this place. We've got to be close to town. <sighs> Slow down! I should pound you! Look! Someone's coming! Maybe it's a ranger. Or maybe it's a hiker that knows his way back to town. I hope he's got a blanket. I'm freezing. Me too. Forget it. You can freeze. Maybe it's a maniac killer in a hockey mask who's gonna slash us. Or maybe you should stay here and let me do the talking. Uh, hey, hello? Who's there? Oh, turn off the brights. Hello. What are we here? I'm Buzz, and this is Denny. We got lost and we can't find the trail back to town. Easy, Toad. You're not a ranger, are you? <laughs> ranger? <laughs> no, not me. I'm a traveler, same as you. Flynn's the name. <laughs> so what are you doing up here? Are you lost, too? Lost? Me? <laughs> Oh, you might say that. Though I suppose I couldn't be truly lost. I know these woods too well. We far from town? Farther than you know, my friends. Farther than you know. So can you help us get back? Me? Yeah, you. I don't see anybody else here. You guys look half frozen. I tell you what. You follow me, and I'll lead you to someone who can help you. Wait. I wouldn't go with him. He gives me the creeps. You got a better idea? Don't worry. I can handle this, too. Why don't you just tell us how to get back? Too far. You never find your way in the dark. So who's this guy you're taking us to? Good doctor. He's got a cottage a little ways up here. In the woods? What kind of a doctor lives in the woods? Patience, boys. You'll see. By the way, how are you guys at solving riddles? Riddles? Why? Just asking. Just asking. There you go, boys. The home of the good doctor. Just like I promised. You guys thought I was joking, didn't you? Who lives here, the Seven Dwarfs? There's just one thing, guys. Before you go asking the doctor for help, you make sure you really need it. Why? Well, sometimes the price he charges is a little, uh, steep. 
<laughs> so why don't you just tell us how... Yo, Flynn! This is creepy. Let's bolt. To where? We're lost, remember? You're not going in there. What else are we gonna do? It's freezing. Maybe he's got a phone. Back off, would you? I'm sorry I got us lost, Danny. Don't worry, I'll smack you when we get home. What's that? Flynn, I know it's you. He's trying to scare us. He's doing a good job. That can't be him, too. Probably a raccoon. That's no raccoon! Danny, what's going on? Danny! Come on. What's there? I don't know. Open up! You boys have made a very grave mistake. I don't suppose either of you are any good at riddles. <laughs> ah, you've come for my delicious cereal, called Chocula. It's chocolatey good. With a devilishly good chocolatey flavor and tasty marshmallows. Wrong air count. Kids come calling for my Frankenberry cereal. It's frightfully good with strawberry flavor and tasty marshmallows. What a treat! El Jocula! Frankenberry! We like both. <laughs> <laughs> you can enjoy this good, nutritious breakfast with Frankenberry! El Jocula! This Halloween, Blockbuster Video has a special treat for your whole family. <laughs> You can take home any of these great Halloween classics for just $7.99. Or rent two movies and get them for $3.99. Now, if that's not a reason to scream, what is? Make it a blockbuster fright. In a Weebles haunted house, Weebles wobble all about, and it's a real exciting place to be. A smiling ghost with glowing face has a secret hiding place, and that's not all, there's plenty more to see. Who calls a Weebles haunted house is a great place to be. Weebles haunted house, including glow-in-the-dark Weeble ghost from Ramper Room. Uh. <laughs> I think we have the wrong house. Bye. Boys, boys, you've made a mistake. <laughs> if you're at my door at this time of night, you've taken a wrong turn and lost your way, correct? Yeah. Happens all the time. Come in, come in, get warm. said you could help us find a way to get back to it. Natural um, science. Huh? That's why I'm here, in case you're wondering. I've dedicated my life to studying flora and fauna. Who? There are many strange and wonderful things that occur in nature, but no one takes the time to really look and study. Observe. This guy's a nutbag. Behold, a true wonder of nature. The brain of a wild boar. Ew! Cool! I've discovered that long after the body dies, the brain still gives off electric impulses. Can you imagine if that energy could be harnessed? And I am not a nutbag. Look, our parents are probably going nuts by now, and, uh... Riddles. How are you boys at Riddles? 
Doc, we're tired and we just want to go home. Indeed, indeed. But first, a riddle. Try this one. How far can you walk into the woods? We don't want to do riddles. But you must. Riddles exercise your brain. And where would you be with no brain? I don't know. Ask the wild boar. Halfway. Say what? He asked how far he can walk into the woods. Halfway. After that, you'd be walking out. Good. Very good. <laughs> you may do. Uh, I'm going to call our folks. No, no, not yet. We've only just begun. No, I think we're done. We play by my rules, but we don't play. What do you want? Another riddle. Here's the deal. I ask you a riddle, and if you solve it, you can call your parents. And if we don't solve it? Then you leave. That's it? We just leave? Simple, no? Let's do it. I'm good at riddles. Okay, what's the riddle? Wonderful! Wonderful! Now, what riddle? Let's see, there's the... No, not that one. Maybe the... Choice. This is a riddle that has perplexed many and confounded even more. And now, young lads, it's your turn to solve it. Here we go. What is it that has no weight, can be seen by the naked eye, and if you put it in a barrel, it would make the barrel lighter? I hate riddles. Okay, it's weightless, it can be seen by the naked eye, and if put in a barrel, would make the barrel lighter. So? I don't know. Goodbye. I knew you wouldn't get it. Wait, that riddle was too hard. Give us another. You had your chance and failed, like all the others. Others? What others? Go away. You know where the door is. But we're lost. Take a left on the trail, follow it to the dirt road, and wait. A taxi cab will pick you up. A cab? In the woods? Comes by every night. Hurry, or you'll miss it. Come on, Doc, just let us use the phone. There is one way, I suppose. What? What's that? You can leave me a specimen. A specimen? You're much smarter than your brother gives you credit for. What kind of specimen? Something I can use in my experiments. Something valuable. Something fresh. Something like this. Wait a minute, wait a minute, no fair. You can't put a riddle in a story that can't be solved. Maybe it can. Yeah, right. It's weightless, you can see it, and if you put it in a barrel, it makes the barrel lighter. No way. Sounds like one of those riddles you can't solve. That's a cheat. No, M maybe it can be solved. Maybe you should all just lighten up and let me finish the story. Thank you. So, 
Danny and Buzz beat feet back into the woods. All they wanted was to get as far away from Dr. Vink as possible. Hey, Danny! Wait up! Was... was that somebody's hand? You saw it. The guy's a lunatic. As soon as we get home, I'm calling the cops. We're still lost, you know? Yeah, I know. You really think a cab's gonna come by? Get real. There's no cabs in the woods. No. No way. He wasn't lying. It's a taxi cab. Man, are we ever glad you came by. Take us into town. Our parents will pay the fur when we get home. Don't worry. I know you're good for it. Flynn! I figured I'd run into you guys again. Guess you didn't solve the riddle. How do you know? Who are you? Well, I give right to folks who uh, can't answer Dr. Vink's riddles. Happened to me around 40 years ago. Whoa, slow down. 40 years ago? Mm-hmm. I gave Dr. Vink a ride up here in my cab. He offered me a big tip if I could solve the riddle. I couldn't, so he took a specimen from me. What kind of specimen? You didn't see it in his house? Ooh, boy. <laughs> I think it's one of his favorites. What is it? It's not what it is. It's what it was. Oh! He took your hand? I got off easy. For 40 years I've been bringing folks up to Dr. Vink's, hoping they can solve the riddle. But they don't. So they all end up here with me. What happens to them? Hey, Dr. Vink's needs his specimens. You're a lying sack. First of all, you're not that old. Didn't I tell you? Before the good doctor got his specimen, uh, I had myself a nasty little accident. I crashed into this big old tree. You might say, I sort of died! <laughs> Stop the car! Stop the car! They all die, just like me. Every night I have the same accident with a different fare. It's kind of a curse. You probably heard some of uh, my fares around Dr. Vink's house. The bushes! There were ghosts! Nobody can leave until someone solves Dr. Vink's riddle. I was hoping the two of you could do it. You know, somehow break the spell. Oh, well, <sighs> wait till you see the accident we're gonna have. Oh, it's gonna be a real doozy. This is your fault. You said you could solve the riddle. Still got time. We don't crash for another old 30 seconds. Think fast, boys. Think! Okay, okay. It's weightless. It can be seen by the naked eye. And it's put in a barrel. It'll make the barrel lighter. <sighs> we're dead. We're dead! I can't think like this! You have to! It's helium! Helium will make the barrel later. But you can't see helium! Won't be long now. What can you see that's weightless? Nothing! Air! But you can't see air! Or can you? Wait a second, there's a trick here. You can't put something in the barrel to make it lighter. You have to take something out. If you take something out of the barrel itself, it'll be lighter. Wait till you see the explosion we're gonna make. I got it! I know the answer! What is it? It's weightless. You can see it. And if you put it in a barrel, it'll make the barrel lighter. Say it! It's a hole! It's a hole in the barrel! Here we go! Yeah! We didn't crash. We're alive. Where's the cab? It's gone. We broke the curse. We're saved. <laughs> uh, we didn't break the curse. You did. Nice going. But you're still a loser. Denny and Buzz Crocker. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Your parents have been going nuts looking for you. The whole town's in an uproar. Come on, get in. What are you boys doing here, anyway? Tell me something. How are you at Riddles? No one ever saw the Phantom Cab again. And when the boys brought the police back to Dr. Vink's cottage, all that was left was an old stone foundation covered with weeds. The end. And now the vote. Thumbs up means Frank's in, thumbs down he's not. And it has to be unanimous. David? Kiki? Betty Ann? Kristen? Eric? And me. Congratulations, Frank. Welcome to the Midnight Society. Ever hear of a gift certificate that turns into a soft drink? Oh, it can happen this Halloween. <laughs> when you give out McDonald's Halloween gift certificates, kids take them to McDonald's and, and they get a McDonald's soft drink. <laughs> a book of 20 Halloween gift certificates costs only a dollar. <laughs> and can turn into 20 regular soft drinks. It must be the magic of Halloween. Nobody can do a McDonald's can. N nobody. Radio Shack is the place people go for specialty batteries for all kinds of things. Choose from over a thousand batteries. Radio Shack has more power. Radio Shack. Hi! There's another box. Over there. Dunkin' Donuts for Halloween. So good, it's scary. Dunkin' Donuts is proud to announce we've created a monster. Introducing a haunting collection of minis for Halloween. Minis are a fraction the size of our regular donuts, but they have the power to attract very interesting guests to your Halloween parties. Oh, I do enjoy an evening with a little light entertainment. Oh. But when your video heads get dirty, you lose your picture. Not a pretty sight. Happily, this new Polaroid video cassette will help you. It actually cleans your heads as it plays, so dirty heads needn't haunt you. New Polaroid video cassettes. Get the picture. What's that? What? I thought I heard something. Like an animal or something. Nobody here but us? 
best chickens. Very funny. <laughs> Here, let me do it. I can do it. Give me the matches. Where's Kristen? She'll be here to get your shorts in a knot. Yeah, after the work is all done, she wouldn't want to break her fingernails. Ouch! We're gonna have to make a rule about latecomers. What was that? It sounded like a hound dog. Maybe it was Kristen. <laughs> She's no dog. I had to pick up Elvis. And who's Elvis? He ain't nothing but a hound dog. My dad says Elvis is king. So, Christian, are you gonna tell us a story or you're just gonna sit there scaring us with Elvis? I have a tale that'll have you shaking in your little hands. Ooh. Elvis is here for the sound effects. Ooh. I'll need some help with the dust, Dave. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society. Call this story The Tale of the Hungry Hounds. On rainy days, Pam liked to rummage around in her musty old attic. Her mother never threw anything away. There was stuff from Pam's grandparents, from relatives, and ancestors who'd been dead for years. One summer, Pam's cousin Amy was visiting from the city. Amy, come here. Look at this. Isn't this great? Grandpa wore this on his, at his wedding. Just think, my mother and your father were just a twinkle in his eye. But I guess Aunt Dora came first. Amy. Come here, look at this. Amy, where are you? Amy? Hello, Charles. Who's Charles? The guests are arriving, dear. It's nearly time for the wedding. This isn't funny. <laughs> there are more things on heaven and earth that you could ever dream of. Says who? Hamlet. His father's ghost made him do things that he didn't want to do. Like what? Like kill his uncle for marrying his mother. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Glad we're not in that family. I don't believe in ghosts anyways. I didn't know you could ride. I can't. Mom won't let me. This is Aunt Dora, and that's her horse, Mirage. She sure looked like you. Let's go. No, no, no. It's coming from in there. Oh, come on, help me. There's a name. Dora Pease, 1963. Come on, this is too creepy. It's probably just a mouse. No, we shouldn't touch it. Mom says let the dead rest in peace. Look, there's the little mouse hole. <clears throat> combination and we'll let you free. Pam, Amy, come on down now. It's time to feed the dog. Let's go. I can't believe that I have to spend my entire summer here. What do you do for fun anyways? Promise you won't tell? Um. 
His owners live in the city. They only come here on weekends, though. Does it bite? Nah, he's just a big baby. Watch. Come here. Ah, uh, good boy. So he's like a big dog. So what? Watch this. dangerous if I knew how to ride. Can I just take some lessons? No. And I wish you wouldn't bring the subject up again. It's dinner time. Let's go home. But it's safe in a ring. I don't want to discuss it. Well, then it happened 30 years ago. Seems like yesterday to me. I think you better give it a rest. with just one person. This is feeble. Don't you do anything around here except play games? What are we gonna do next, Jethro? Shuck some corn? Come on, humor me. I found it in the attic. The spirits are supposed to give us messages from the other world. Hmm, maybe they can tell us where to get a pizza. Amy. I'm sorry. Let's visit the far side. Mom said that she and Aunt Dora used to do this when they were kids. You're doing this, right? No. L. E. T. M. E. O. U. T. Late now. No. It's spelled let me out. Let me out? Maybe it's that rodent calling from Aunt Dora's box. One, four, nine. What if it works? We're just going to open it up and take a look. What's the big deal? Yeah, but you saw how upset my mom got it. It's like she's haunted by her sister. If she catches it, it, it Look, if they can fit through that mouse hole, it's not big enough to hurt us. Yeah, but what if it's something else? Like what? Now, what were those numbers? One, four, nine. Look, I'm telling you, this isn't gonna work, and I, I don't even believe in this stuff. Then you shouldn't be scared. Cousin, what are you scared of? <clears throat> oh, cool, it's all her riding stuff. It's all covered with dirt and grass, yeah. Looks like they never washed it after the last time she wore it.
presenting Sheer Madness, Circuit City's Midnight Madness Sale. Thursday only till midnight. Circuit City will go raving mad with shocking reductions on hundreds of items. Save on this VHS VCR, just $169. This RCA 19-inch color TV with remote is a mere $266. Circuit City's Midnight Madness Sale. Get there by midnight before the curtain falls. Trick or treat. Trick or treat forever. Smell my feet. They won't let us go. Give us something good to eat. You kidnapped the four missing people. Watch Night of the Jack-O-Lantern on an all-new Goosebumps coming up next on Fox Kids Monster on a Saturday. But beware, you're in for the one and only scare. Make them one of us! As Halloween approaches, you have to prepare yourself for what might happen. Roar are and sprinkle. It's a special time of year, and Dunkin' Donuts is pressing up their donuts for the occasion. And here's the werewolf. So come to Dunkin' Donuts and get into the spirit of Halloween. We'd like some Halloween donuts, please. Oh, of course. Peace. No peace. It's all our family for a hundred years. As you are, so was I. As I am, so will you be. <sighs> nice thought. Grave. Why did you bring me here? What is that? A bone? Mon petit rouge. What? Mon petit rouge. What is happening to you? It's a gift from the fox. He leaves me presents. Very nice. Now, let's go. I called him Mon Petit Rouge, my little red one. I fed him each day. He looked at me through the cage with his little golden eyes. I know. Let's travel back to Earth now, okay? I didn't want the hounds to tear him apart. But they were ravenous and howling for the hunt. The day of the hunt, I got up before dawn to see Mon Petit Rouge. He was shivering in his cage. I opened the door, and I let him run free in the barn. The hounds could hear him, and they could smell him. 
They were going crazy. I know the feeling. I opened the barn door. And he seemed to smile at me. And then he ran away. The hounds were furious. I wanted to ride after him before the hunters came. So I saddled up Mirage and we raced over the hills. But, but then something startled him. And he shied before a jump. A and he tripped. And we fell together. Pam, your imagination is running away with you. You are Pam. You're not Dora. Hello, Dora. I was wondering when you'd get around to your chores. I've come to feed the hounds. You should have fed them. all torn up when you died. Oh, my little Dora. She is not Dora. When I found them, they were nearly starved. They leapt at me. I couldn't keep them down. I, I got away, but, but my heart... My heart! I'm sorry, Giles. Why didn't you feed the hounds? The fire run! He's scared. Maybe he's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Who locked the girls in the barn? It might have been Giles. Or it might have been another ghost from the family graveyard. There's got to be another way out of here. I have to feed the hounds. Don't get strange on me again, please. They're trapped in there. Starved and it's all my fault. You listen to me. You are not... Dora, you're Pam. It's not your fault, and it wasn't her fault either. It's that jacket. Take off the jacket! Dora, listen to me. We're your nieces. You're inside Pam's body. Nonsense. I have no nieces. My brother and my sister are ten years old. Now I've got to feed those hounds. They're starved before a hunt, you know. What if they attack us? They must be fed. Pam! Dora! Don't open that door! <sighs> let me go. I have to feed the hounds. Not until you let Pam back into her own body. Forget it. I'm going for help. No! I don't know the way. I'll show you if you let me feed the hounds. What are you gonna feed them? Me? Kibble. Now let me out and I'll get it. No way. Tell me where it is. If you don't tell me, we're both dog meat. Over there by the ladder.
and all this dust. Let's go downstairs. This place is haunted. I thought you didn't believe in ghosts. Come on, I gotta go feed the dogs. What dogs? You only have one. That's what I said. I have to feed the dog. You said dogs. You said I have to feed the dogs. Did not. You did, too. Did not. Did, too. Who cares what I said? What's wrong with you? Nothing. Nothing. I'm fine. I'm okay. Okay. Rexy's hungry, and I'm gonna go feed him now. Okay. I have just the thing. After that, Pam tried one more time to convince her mother to let her take riding lessons. And it finally worked, because her mom was no longer haunted by her sister Dora, and Dora's ghost was no longer tormented by the howling of the hungry hounds. The end. I declare this meeting of the Midnight Society closed. And don't forget to feed your dog, or he may have a bone to pick with you. Something they never expected. Cookies! Simply roll out Pillsbury sugar cookies, cut, bake, then create your own deliciously spooky cookies. Oh, wow! Woohoo! Mike! Mike! What? There's something under the bed. I hold something. There's nothing under the bed. I hold something. Oh. It's just fluffy. You got scared by a dumb cat. I wasn't scared. I told you there was nothing under the bed. Thank <laughs> you. 
Don't even listen to NPR. Create your 